Right, um, it's Street Talk time now. I, I'm not going to say this was a vintage week of Coronation Street this week, are you? Just to set you up here, listeners, there, there might be a little bit of boredom or moaning coming into today's Street Talk. We'll try, we'll try and keep it light. As usual, some really exciting things happened. I think. Semi- Usually so at least one exciting thing happens. Wednes- so Wednesday's two, episode was I good. two exciting things happened this week. What? Well, the, the, the affair being revealed. Yeah. And, oh, and, and the shock died. at the end. I was not prepared for that. I'll, I'll those get those that two later. were really good. Yeah, that it was just surrounded it by a, like... a bit of fillery stuff. Um, I do have a few good storyline titles for you, Gemma. No, you don't. I do. Well, we're starting off with the Papa Dom story, of course. We knew that one already. Um, so, Ardy and Courtney being um, found out caught in the act. Yeah. Caught. Yeah. yeah. Caught, not the caught best. in the act. Yes, yeah. like Courtney. Not my yes. best one. Not my best one. Um, next one Shell Shock. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, a bit better, a little bit oh. better. Okay, and then we've got the Cassie come home. Right now, you ready for this one? This is a good one. <laughs> you you know you know the classic 1980s film? <laughs> Sorry, I have to explain this up. This is going to be a short street talk, I need to pad me, it out. Why don't you just tell me the joke and I'll see if no, I no, get it. No, no, you, you, I don't think you'll get it otherwise. <laughs> Jewel of the Nile, classic. Yeah, this is the Dee Dee story where she doesn't believe okay, that get... her new man actually fancies her. She thinks he's just an interested in American law. Denial of the jewel. Joel love denial. No. Yes, that's really good. What do you mean, no? though? Joel love denial. Joel love denial. Jewel of denial. No. It's brilliant. Oh, you're so unsupportive of my punning endeavours. Yeah. Okay, then we've got the teen... See, Sabrina and the teenage bitch was in it a little bit. Last one. This is, is this another one. Yeah, this is, this is a short one. It's Ed's gambling storyline. This is a classic Corey throwback for this one, Gemma. Luke in the Marina. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ed, horses. Classic Corey talking character. Ed, Ed, the talking horse. This, let me say it. Who was Fred married to? Edna Gigi. Edna Gigi. <laughs> Oh, that'll get us a chuckle. Thank you very much. Terrible. I got there at the end. That's awful. <laughs> you, Classic terrible. Michael terrible storyline title. Uh, imagine if you were in charge of newspaper headlines. Well, sorry. What can I say? The story on the front page wouldn't be what the what you know what the article was about. It would be explaining the pun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, I did my best. Sorry well done. You tried. Well done. You. I tried. Right. Papa Dom story, Gemma. We're going we're gonna to bust this one out first. One. Well, Coronation Street, I'm going to say, put this as its A story this week. Interesting some might, choice. Some might say a bold move, putting Stu and Eliza in the spotlight for a whole week. Um, can't say it completely pulled off, although we did get a stunt on Monday's episode. Um, so... Eliza's still getting a bit impatient on Monday because um, Dom's supposed to be visiting. He didn't turn up last week. He says his car's broken down and she's like, well, clearly he's just he's just having like you on. He's stringing just... you along here, Eliza. You can summarise this so easily. Eliza gets run we don't, over. We don't want that. Look, we don't want this to be a... I said it'd be a shorter street talk. talk Eliza gets run over and then she wants to move that. in with her dad and her dad doesn't really want her to move in but he is trying to blackmail Stu and says, give me 10 grand and you have her. Yes, that's Free. exactly what happened. Look, stop it, stop it. Not I free. asked you which story you wanted to be, this, be the synopsizer of, and you let me choose, you gave so me I'm a doing of two, this one. <laughs> two stories Look, I don't care about. You do care about the Courtney storyline, that's what you've got next. You like, you enjoyed that on Wednesday at least, so I'm going to slowly take us through every minute detail of the thrilling adventures we of Stu and Eliza, to. thank you very much. Look, she they go to the precinct because Stu said, Look, you, you, your dad's not going to turn up for your love. He's He was really quite mean wasn't he he was like saying well clearly your dad doesn't love you otherwise he would have turned up <laughs> it's like i'm not surprised that eliza got out and, and ran away from him he's been a right ass to her um so anyway he, he runs she runs off into the street and then don't ask me how it managed to get up quite such a speed in the tight constraints of the precinct road but um a car comes out of nowhere bashes into her and knocks her flying we watched that scene a few times, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> um, not not getting the uh, the most sterling of Im- impressions online. I I didn't mind it, but everyone's saying that was a rubbish rubbish stunt. I we we watched it back. We were trying to figure I record, out. I recorded it on my phone, and then we could use them, you scroll back and forth quite easily. And um, it did look like it the, appears the it actress was somewhat was green there. Screen. But I do think she was on a green screen. I think I think yeah. They, I mean they... the argument is. 
do you want them to just run over the actresses? Usually, it was good. Usually when yeah. they have you know, you know people being hit by a car, you're either going to have an old Alison Webster where somebody runs into a road and then people watching just hear a bang, or you get your mannequin like, like Sarah Louise after the... No. Um, after the COVID. I but... prefer I prefer you hear or it is insinuated but not seen in like 90% of, of cases if it's a accident. Because mm. I don't want them to spend money on it. But 100% of shagging scenes. <laughs> Just show me some curtains blowing out through a window and I'll you, you, that's all you need piece to it together myself. No, I, I, I didn't mind this. I thought it was quite good for them to actually show the car hitting her. Even though we did go, oh, that's she fake. She's the bloody wing, fake. The, the wing mirror. Unless she's made of tough stuff, is, is Eliza. She's just going around vandalising cars with her shoulder. Well, they they also had a stunt woman, didn't they? Because they put yeah. on the Instagram, they show, look, here's, here's Eliza's double. But I didn't feel like they had I reckon actually what they must have done was filmed the stunt double getting hit with it and then superimposed her over the top. Maybe you're right. Because but at one made, point, made it think. looks like the wing mirror goes behind her leg, but then it appears in front of her leg. <laughs> um, anyway, so she's been hit by a car, down on the road, and Stu's like, ready out. But she doesn't die. She does not die, she's alright. She's clearly in a lot of pain, though. So she goes, uh, they go to the hospital, and <laughs> Eliza's, <laughs> Eliza does that, will I be able to play the guitar Eliza. again? I didn't even do the joke if I couldn't play it before. Yeah, so uh, she will play a guitar again, fortunately. And she's also concerned that her dad would want to know that she's, you know, what's happened to her. So can Stu, that's what I said. So Stu is asked to go and phone her. So Dom shows up with this giant teddy um, and and Stu says, explains what happened. Kind of said, yeah, sorry, it's my, my fault. Yeah, Eliza says, yeah, we were arguing about you, actually. And Don makes it very clear that he thinks Stu's an old, total old duffer who can't look after Eliza whatsoever. And and then he kind of, he, he's clearly lying at this point. He says, oh, yeah, my, what's he saying? My phone ran out of battery. I saw the message you sent me, Eliza, and I was just about to reply to you, but my phone ran out of battery. Um, she completely falls for it, but Stu sees right through it. Um, and then Eliza goes to get a cast put on and wants Dom to come with her, not Stu. Burned. That's all I can say. And it, any, just throw in any commentary that you, I'm sure you've got some deep thoughts about this storyline just waiting to burst out, haven't you? What colours are cast? White. How you can get any colour and she picked white. If that doesn't sum up Eliza as a character, I don't know what is. Do you get to choose your cast colour? Yeah. Really? Well, I would, yeah. I My mum got a cast once, I'm sure. Why was I in the bone. cast room then? I remember seeing all the colours. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what, what double life have I been leading? Maybe at the private hospitals, that's what you get. It wasn't a private hospital, <laughs> I can tell you that for nothing. <laughs> anyway, um, so she's got a cast on later. Alia shows up and as Stu says, um, well, Eliza's got the person that she wants with her. He's clearly very miffed that, um, she, that he's been um, shunned in favour of dodgy Dom. Um, and like and Ali says, look, don't don't worry about it. He's a dad. This isn't your fault. It's normal to think that the sun shines out of a dumb uh, out of a dad's I ass at the moment. Out of a dumb <laughs> ass at the moment. Dom's <laughs> ass at the moment. Look, he's a novelty, but it's gonna wear off. Don't worry. Just stick it out. Ride it out, Stu. So they go and see her in the hospital room. She seems kind of pleased enough with how her cast has got, come on. And Stu's like, oh yeah, well maybe we can go and have a pizza for tea tonight, like pet. And Eliza's like, well actually, I want to stay with my dad. Uh, and not just one for one night either. I want to live with him. Oh no, Gemma, Eliza, she's going to go and live with Dom. But where does Dom live? She can, she Precinct. wants. Precinct, just like everybody set. else now, apparently. No, he does have a set. Oh, he does have a set. Yes. Well, that's all right, she can move well, in then. I think he's supposed to be living at the precinct. Was it Was it Wednesday that we got to yeah. see it? It was a very precinct-esque well, they, uh, decor. Well, they did an establishing shot outside the precinct, and then the next thing you see is Stu standing inside a block of flats. Mm-hmm. Must be. Which makes me think if they didn't mean for it to be that way, then they made a bit of a mistake choosing that particular shot to open the show with. It's funny, like at the beginning of the year, we were saying, Oh, I wonder who they'll have living at the precinct. But it's, now we're it's, like, oh. everybody lives at the precinct. Who have we got there now? We've got um, Evelyn and Cassie. Well, e- Evelyn and Cassie's flat there is there, although neither of them are actually living it at the moment. Sabrina and, um, and Thingy live there. Then now you've got. Gav. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you've got, um, what's, what's his, his face? Name? Dom. Gav. Oh. 
Suspicious, I think. Anyway, um, Stu's absolutely fuming at this news that Eliza's chosen her dad over him, and Dom's like, Tell me you, what it you, like. you hash this out. Yeah, I can't believe that you want to live with your dad instead of me. No, say it. I'm absolutely fuming. I'm absolutely fuming. Yeah. Just like that. And Eliza says, look, I don't want you to be my guardian Shut anymore. Up, no, you are old, and you're a big old fart, Stu. Stu's fun, and he's my dad. So Ali no, says, Dom's look. Dom's fun. What? Dom's fun. Dom's fun. Sorry, Dom's fun. I wrote Stu's fun in my notes here, but you're right, that doesn't Stu's make sense. Stu's not fun. Alia says, look, Stu, leave her, leave her alone with Dom. Please, it's all going to sort itself Alia's out. Alia's like, let, let her live with Dom for a week. He'll be screaming mm. to return her. <laughs> Alia, Alia has a scene with Eliza and says, look, oh, look, you can change your mind if you want to. Don't worry, we can't tell you what to do. And Eliza says to her, yeah, I hate Stu. He's rubbish. And Alia says, you know what? You can be pretty ungrateful. Stu's been working his socks off to provide for you. Nobody cares for you as much as he does. And uh, Eliza's like, yeah, well, I don't care. So Stu's with Dom in the waiting room later and it quickly becomes apparent that Stu doesn't actually want to look after Eliza permanently after all. Because uh, he's like, he likes the idea of having a daughter, but um, not, not 24 hours a day. So he tells Stu, look, I just... Yeah, I'm not cut out for being a, pa a parent, quite frankly. Discipline, routines, that's just not me. Maybe we should stay, maybe um, she should stay at your house for a little bit longer and maybe she's, maybe she's going to go off me. After all, look, Dom says, I'm going through a few money troubles as it is, so, you know, maybe... Stu's like, what the heck? You clearly... You, you just hurt, you're just trying to get a load of money off me. It doesn't, it doesn't work, the, the Dom's ruse. Well, I don't know, I suppose Dom was actually trying to hint at it, wasn't he? Yes. Yes, yeah. yes. Dom was trying no. to... Nothing. Dom's saying, you've got money, and... I don't. If I don't have... And, and I, yeah, I don't one. have money, maybe we could have a little arrangement here. Mm -hmm. He's watched this show before. And maybe I might... And watching something else. Maybe I might back off a little bit if I could have some of your... some of your windfall. What do you say to that? She's like, you... You think money is more important than your own flesh She's and blood? You're paying. You 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 want. You're selling your child to me. How how what the hell? So uh, uh, they can't really get very far into this conversation because Eliza and Alia, I think, come out of the um the cast room or whatever it's called. And um, Stu says, "Look, you're coming home with me today." She's miffed. Goes to the car with Alia. Um, Stu says to Dom, "You're not getting a penny off of me." So go home. Stu tells Alia about Dom's. Um, offer and he says well you know I'm, I might, might actually go for it because if it gets me rid of Dom it's money well spent and Alia says that's no good look he can still take you to court over this he, you give him the money you can't you, it's got to be a secret you, you, you've lost all your What's this? <laughs> what's it? You've lost your what's it? You lost your you lost it. Yeah, and you your got monster munch. you lost your money and you could lose your daughter as well. If you could, don't don't give in to this so he goes also, off to bed to have, have like, a ponder over there ten grand. yeah <laughs> why didn't you haggle yeah um so it's the evening Stu tries to have a bit of a makeup chat with eliza she's kind of playing along with it but then uh, she says oh i'm gonna go and take myself off to bed i oh, know she doesn't she says i'm gonna take myself off to school tomorrow so, and um but actually wait she's packing her unicorn bag and does a classic corrie child midnight flit she very loudly was it you know she's strumming was. her guitar as she no, went. No, she slammed the. She like, she's like sneaking about. He lit. You made a comment about this. He. She literally waited like a second after he after she went oh, upstairs. Oh yeah, she did, didn't she? Packed her bag and then like slammed the door on yeah. the way out. Very secret. And Stu's like, it's probably like, oh, it's probably just Ali's boyfriend. <laughs> um, Wednesday. So that was a thrilling episode on Monday, wasn't it? Wednesday. Oh, you just wait. So, oh no, it made it a bit better on Wednesday. So Stu and Ali have come down to find that Eliza's gone. They assume that she's gone off to school like she said she would for choir practice. She's even put the laundry away, says Ali. So she must be all okay with things. And he says, thanks, Ali, for talking to her yesterday. Seems to have done the trick. And I'm going to show Eliza just what a fun old chap I am today by taking her to the pictures. Also... What do you think they're going to see, Oppenheimer or Barbie? They've probably, they've probably seen it now. What do you think? What's in the I don't know what's out at the moment. Not sure. There's that new check. nun film coming out. See, and what, uh, and nun? Saw 13 or whichever one they're up to at the moment. But anyway, um, he's like, yeah, Dom, Dom's not having his money. Um, he'd never be able to handle full-time custody either. Eliza is going nowhere, or so he thinks. So... He's happening to walk along the street to speak Ooh, a to her later. In Venice. 
Uh, don't fancy it. I want to see that. He goes on oh, to... my big what? fat Greek wedding friend. Definitely don't fancy that. Stu sees Ruby and Hope at the bus stop later, who ask him where Eliza is. And he says, oh, she's at choir practice. She went off to school early. And Hope's, Hope knows that choir practice is, isn't on, but she keeps stunned because... She's not grass. Sisters before Mr. Stu's. And uh, Yeah, exactly. And at speed dial later, Stu gets a call from the school. Eliza's not come in. Oh no. So he's convinced she must have gone to see Dom, rushes off to goes and see him at his new lovely precinct home. Hammers on the door. Yep, Eliza's there. She says, yeah, I was here last night, actually. So she says, what? Why didn't you tell me? And Dom, to Dom, and Dom says, well, I'm under no obligation to let you know where my daughter is. Thank you very much. And if Eliza's oh so important to you, why are you so desperate to cling on to this cash? Come on, gimme, gimme, gimme. Eventually, Eliza's social worker turns up and a police officer because Stu's called them round and Dom lets them in, but Stu has to stay outside. They find out that Eliza's allowed to... Oh, this is really a boring story. Well, no, story, the, the social it? worker speaks to <laughs> Eliza and says, she wants to stay here, there's not really a problem, it's fine with She's me. A, he's a dad you, you after can't, all. You can't do anything about it. Yeah. And I can't believe that the social worker has got no problem with the, the dad not informing the granddad and also not like not sending her to school. That just seems like a really irresponsible. I know. Move, but just she. Well, she's not here to decide that, is she? Stu celebrates uh, by punching a policeman on the nose. Yeah, that was that was a moment of excitement. They have a little tussle, don't they, with the with the police officer? He gets a line, which makes a nice change for him. Like, don't punch me in the face. Yeah, so uh, I'm, having, I'm getting married. Stu on gets Saturday. arrested, gets bailed, so that's a bit of excitement for all the five minutes. And Dee Dee's there. And uh, warns him that grandparents don't usually come out well in these situations. Well, she's trying to cheer maybe... him up by saying, well, grandparents don't usually, it doesn't usually work out for them. But luckily for you, Eliza wants to stay with you, right? Yeah, she says that right? if, if if you can make Eliza want to stay with you, no. then... Yeah, he says, she says maybe if Eliza really no. wants to stay with you, then she yes, the calls her. Yes, but the point was that she doesn't. That was supposed to be the point well, of that scene. Yes, okay. Well, maybe, I don't know. No, I know, because I watched it. What were you doing? <sighs> Typing up my notes, actually. Eliza breaks the news about the arrest to Alia. Is that right? No. Yes. Yes, it is. I no, did watch then, this, I promise. But then Alia tells him about Alia... the 10K. Who's him? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, I don't bloody know. No, it's Dee Dee, isn't it? Dee Dee goes round to see Alia. I remember. I was watching it. <laughs> She says... We take it in turns, don't we? You take it in turns to watch what's happening. I'll, I'll tell you that. She says, look, Stu's been arrested um, and Alias tells her about the Dom's offer of £10,000. DJ says, look, if Stu can prove this, it could seriously affect his case. Was a bit risky move of Dom, really, wasn't it? Stu ends up spending the ep- rest of the episode getting a little bit sozzled in the pub with Evelyn. Nice little scene. They never have anything together. They mentioned what Stu called Evelyn Evelyn, and she corrected him, so I did enjoy that. And then he ends up going and has a bit of a sing-song at the bar. But fortunately for Daisy, who's having to put up with this, Arlie and Dee Dee come up in, try and talk him home. And he's like, oh, I'm just going to give him the money. It's quicker. Get, I'll get what I want. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Dee Dee says, no, don't. Let's have a strategy meeting, which we don't get to see. Because the next time we see Stu, he's sleeping off his drunken stupor on the sofa there. And Ali was not impressed with him. She says, look, next few days are a waiting game. Waiting quietly and patiently. Just, it's going to be fine, I promise. You've got to show that you're the perfect granddad. Get some Werther's Originals. Exactly. So, Alia and Stu on Friday. It's Yasmin's birthday. Happy birthday, Yasmin. They're recording the video message for her. It was, they're, they're, they're into that in Corrie at the moment. You, what was it? The, they did. Oh, it, it was, was a Billy, wedding. Well, yeah. yeah, Billy and Paul recording a video. Or was it Summer? No, Summer. Summer and Billy, I think, doing a video something invite about or something weddings. the other day. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, what's, going, what's going on with Ryan at the moment, speaking of videos? He should do a video, shouldn't he? Yeah. They said, yeah... <laughs> Yeah, naked video. They just they go around asking all the neighbours, can you just film something for Yasmin's birthday? <laughs> Ryan's just on autopilot Ryan, and like he strips off. She was a fan, but that's fine with me. More maybe, than Maria. Maybe she is. Maybe could she's be. one of his subscribers. Maybe you never know. Like, Thank God they got me one from Ryan. <laughs> I don't care about this one from Eliza. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, so anyway, uh, they decide they're going to try and get the neighbours to record Yasmin a video message as well. What about Eliza, though, says um, Alia. And she says, well, you know, I, I, I don't know. He, he, I'm still really worried about her, but he, he's, she's not responding to any of my messages. So I don't think she's going to be into it. Oh, how I miss her. And her, I don't know, what does she bring to <laughs> What does she bring to the house, Eliza? Still, still trying to figure out her personality. I don't, I don't, I don't not one. like, I don't not like Eliza. I don't, I don't. She's just still a bit of a blank canvas after being yeah. in the show for, what, a year, is it? She's not, just a kind of sweet, uh, sweet girl who can sometimes get a bit stroppy. Her, her stories have been plot driven. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So she hasn't really got a personality. No, she's, she's standard young girl isn't she that's that's not quite turned into a teen tear away yet anyway social worker comes to visit Stu. she says i've been to see eliza she wants to save a dot with dom now sorry um i'm sure there's a storyline title there with dom domestic domestic i'll think of it for next week Stu says look just please try and get eliza to come back and the woman's like oh, i can't she's fine with her dad actually um and you going around nagging eliza to return isn't going to help either so, later on, we have a lovely little scene with Sam and Hope and Eliza in the cafe with Roy. He's there going to record his message for Yasmin, which they help him out with. Did you enjoy Roy's... Um, it was funny. Holding wanted, up his cards. I wanted it at the end to say it's Roy Cropper. I know! Perfect opportunity with the final card to have said, from Roy. From Roy Cropper. Yeah, from Roy. That would have been funny. <laughs> um, so, the, the, the kids go to the bus stop and Eliza... Oh, no, and th- this is where... Um, yeah, or, Eliza or, gets feels what? Or Roy could have done. Roy could have done all the all the the because he had a bunch of cards with writing on it. Yeah, like the love words, actually scene. And then at the end, he could have gone from Roy, but said it. Could have done. Could have worked. Who knows? Um, so Eliza feels left out because she wasn't asked to record a video message. So um, Hope and Sam help her record one in the style of a rap. No, they're they're beatboxing, aren't they? And she's yeah. doing a little bit of cool singing. My name is Eliza and I'm here to say I hope you have a birthday in the Weatherfield way. Sound off. One, birthday two, in the Weatherfield way. What was that a surprise party? Um, it's Tragic. It's a fake out. Everyone's forgotten your birthday. Birthday fake out, yeah. But they haven't really because here's a present. <laughs> um, anyway, so they see that. You failed blah, to drive blah, blah. Test. And Stu's left at the, the end of the episode Probably. very touched because the accompanying message from Eliza's video is, I love you. And that's basically Sucker. it. What's she want now? Sucker. I think that's the shortest we've ever been. Like, th- there was an awful lot of time spent on this story this week, wasn't there? But we've just bashed through it in about 15 minutes or I so. Don't, I don't have anything. What was wrong with this story? What can we Can we unpick what we didn't like about it? Was it the characters? Was it the was it the cliched blackmaily kid selling plot? Do you remember the days when it was you know shocking that somebody tried to sell their child? Where, which time was that though? Because there were about fifty. You know, back in the classic with with Terry and Tommy, I really they... kind, of, kind of meant something then. But people have been selling kids on Corey for like decades. I just who it, were we met like uh, Tracy Summer most recently tried to sell her kid. You had to, what's her face? who was in Downton Abbey trying to sell her kid. The mallets brought bought her. Yeah. There's loads of them. Uh, Kylie. It's just that it, there's nothing really about this story. You even that, did a chart that you yeah, talk, yeah, did, you did, did a chart did about a chart how much it costs ago. to buy a child. Yeah, ten grand for Eliza. I it, it they're just I I I did nothing that feels, um fresh or novel or anything about this story and it's not exactly the same as any of those ones but yeah you've got the deadbeat dad the the making a dodgy offer um not actually wanting to be a parent the person who is actually going to do a better job has the kid taken away from them it's just it's just going down a well-trodden path and the fact that the characters involved i don't really care about it just makes it um all the all the more uninspiring. If Eliza moved in with Dom permanently, it would make no functional difference whatsoever to anything that's going on in the show. No, it, that, that's a really good point. We haven't seen Eliza. We haven't seen enough of their happy family setup to nope. care whether she comes or goes. Nope. Um, you know, Stu's... Is Stu going to learn anything from this? No. 
does it does he he's need to be, be taught a lesson learn i don't to be think a cool so. granddad um i mean eliza's being a brat but She's well, that yeah, that's kind of part of the problem as well. But Eliza being fairly bratty over the last few weeks yeah, kind of makes me think, just take her then, Don. Do you, <laughs> you, you're better off without her, mate. They they've left it too long because it was kind of sweet when when um, Eliza first moved in with Stu and he was getting all excited about having to walk her to school. Yeah, and, do you remember that? And stuff. Yeah, I do. So I brought it up. <laughs> Thanks, I got. <laughs> but we haven't seen that for a while. No. They've just or, been ticking along. They, they, we've not seen enough of what goes on at number six, and it's just been and, mostly. And Yasmin's not there either. Yeah, I wonder whether I wonder how Yasmin different... would be the heart of the story, really. Yeah, me. See, I, I guess you know what's going on would... here is feeding into Stu's feeling of inadequacy that has been building up for a little bit. But that longer. doesn't feel connected at all. No, and, and I, you know, if Yasmin was here, she could say something about, "Oh, my grandchildren are the greatest joy of my life." Like you, Stu, my children, like, you know, she, because obviously Cal's dead and she's been, she had to sort of step in and do for um, Alia and Zidane mm. what Stu's doing for Eliza. But that feels like such a more, much more solid relationship than Stu and Eliza. Yeah, so I guess on paper it maybe is better that Yasmin's not here at the moment Why? because... But I just Stu- think she should be. Well, here. no, but I know I'm thinking that maybe it's it it should be better dramatically that Stu has to deal with this by himself and he doesn't have the support of Yasmin, although he does have Alia, who is being, you know, Alia's being palatable this week, isn't she? She's oh yeah. I, I, I wonder whether her. this was originally a storyline that needed Yas that you know that they want Yasmin in, but she's on holiday or something. Yeah, possibly. I don't. I don't really know. It's just. It's just. I mean, it really works. not inspiring. It's okay, but it's not an A story by any stretch of the imagination, even though it took up that much space. They, it, it, it's not. They're not frequently occurring characters, but every so often they say, "Oh, let's have a little story with the the guys at number six and. It's just not working, mate. It, the the the, prob- the other problem with it is, of course, that people are still saying. Now, one of um, one of Ian McLeod's best stories in his increasingly long tenure was was the Yasmin and Jeff story, wasn't it? Everybody loved the coercive control story, and there had been, you know, Yasmin definitely wasn't a lot of people's favourite character before that, but that did such good for her, and ever since that's wrapped up, she's just she's been put in. They're, they're still using her, but not in anywhere near as good way. And people are just saying, oh, not as good as the coercive control story. And I, I don't know how they're going to get out of this, but it's it's not it's not this way. Um, well, do you feel... Yes, me what? being in Pakistan doesn't help. No. Um, it, there's all, it's also the fact that, you know, we're supposed to feel sorry for Stu, I guess, but also I'm thinking, no, he has been... Not the best. He he he's trying his best, but you know when you have those scenes like in the car when he t- when he told Eliza, "Oh, your dad hates you." <laughs> but I suppose nobody's perfect. You know he's 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 he screwed up with his first child. He's and... not. He doesn't know how to raise a child. He's never. He's never been good at it. I would imagine his generation of men probably let mm. um, the wife deal with all the kids stuff. It was really sweet. There are loads you... of people his age who have children who they don't know anything about. Mm. And to be fair to him, it was really sweet last week when he went and got the the, tap, the pads and everything for Eliza. That was really nice. He, he's, he's, he's trying his best, but not always doing a good job. And He doesn't understand I... children. No, but not everybody does. Um, I, it... I don't know why you need to drag it out. We've talked about it. Talked now. about this. Is anyone enjoying this? Are we missing something? Or, <laughs> or, 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 or is it? Is it? Maybe they're just build. Maybe next week's going to be a big week with big stories. I don't know what's happening next week, Gemma. So let let's let's move on the Courtney and Ardy storyline. So this this was a bit of a sandwich this week, wasn't it? It was a little bit, you know, not so exciting on Monday and Friday, but Wednesday, absolutely fantastic. So um, I'll pass over to you to, to recap what's been going on there. Thanks, Michael. I'm here live in Weatherfield where Courtney and Ardy have just been caught out. What? Let me tell you how Tell me, Gemma. <laughs> tell me. Just the way you always say, pass over to me. I'm just sitting here. 
You don't need to pass any. You How should pass I pass any. stories? I don't know. You don't you? need to introduce me either. You're not the MC this of the is Gemma. podcast. She's my wife. I've well, known her for over 20 moment. years now. And apparently she likes Coronation Street occasionally. Gemma. Nobody can prove that. What happened in the Allahan storyline <laughs> this week? <sighs> Well, so I'll tell you what, some chickens came home to roost, didn't they? <laughs> yes. On Monday, Darren and Dev are reminding us, everybody at home, that they they've got a business deal and that and they're it's all gonna happen. And if you've forgotten the specifics, don't worry about it because everyone else. It's all has off by the end that. of the week. Um, what is that? Um, package pickups at, at convenience shops. stores. Yeah. I don't. Uh, I want to work. I I want to kind of. <laughs> um, put that business idea up against Nipper Snapper and just, like, make them fight somehow. If we, <laughs> battle it if out for the Battle of the Beds Dragon's business ideas. Dragon's Den for business ideas on Coronation Street, I think I would love, actually love that. That would be a really <laughs> hilarious um, April Fool's Day joke to just have over the years all the... Alia comes in with her embroidery machine. Yeah. And, then, and coloured sports bras, which I'll never let them live down. <laughs> anyway... Packages in in a shop. What a brilliant idea. Let's have a celebration meal. Why don't you bring Ardy and Courtney? And Amy comes into the shop and Dev says, hey, you come too, because I don't want Ardy to be a third wheel. And she says she's busy and makes a hate the exit because she knows about the affair between Ardy and Courtney. She does. And she doesn't want to go to a meal with those two there. Um, uh, I found her inclusion in this week's story... Kind of interesting because I think in many ways the story would have worked pretty much without her. Yeah, this is obviously, it felt to me like Amy fancies RD. Yeah, well, she they, they, they kind of almost had something a few yeah. weeks ago, didn't so, they? And then Courtney came along and flashed her, um, well, all sorts. Her brilliant smile. Yes. So, RD finds out about this meal idea and he's not really excited, excited about it. And neither's Amy, but Dev tries to convince her by telling her that, De- that Darren's loaded and he likes to do charity donations and maybe he could give some money to the shoulder volunteers so she should come and talk to him about it. Can you imagine how miserable it would be to be at a meal with and then like girl starts talking to you about giving money to a child? Oh. It must be hard being rich. Everyone trying to get... Glad I'm not. I just I still find the shoulder volunteer's name hilarious. Yeah. Got a lot, I'm getting a lot of mileage, that one. <laughs> at the shop later, Courtney and Ardy are trying to figure out how to get out of this, and they agree to just go. Just go with it. Because they don't think they've got that many brain cells between them, <laughs> even though they're supposed to think they're both brilliant business minds. I they don't... think I had to get out of a meal. I don't know who we're supposed to think is cleverer, because uh, Courtney's got all her degrees She's and qualifications an and, and everything, and Ardy's being... We're being told that Ardy is this business genius. Oh, well, he but came up with ideas for, for the, something that already exists. He's... He's just um, looking, to, to, to me, the whole of this story, he's just like hanging on by the skin of his teeth. He doesn't know what he's doing. No. He's coming across as supremely naive yeah, in all blundering. aspects of this. Michael, this is the steamy, sexy summer love story he's that been we've taken all been advantage of. gagging for that all year. And finally we get to <laughs> unleash our hormones by watching Ardy and Courtney gyrate on the sofa. <laughs> Amy gets Ardy on his own in the shop and says, "Look, I've been convinced to play along. I'm going to pretend to be your date at this at this meet at this dinner. I'm dead against your affair. Why can't you be with someone who actually likes you?" And um, Dev hint, comes hint in me. when uh, before Ardy, the the business genius, can figure out she's talking about herself really liking him. But again, what's the appeal there? If I was Amy, nothing would put me off Ardy faster than seeing him lusting after Courtney. She she knows that he's um, what he's really like. He is sweet. He's a very honourable gent, I think. Mm. He helped her out with... Um, the, in the whole Aaron story with the old um, right yeah, on his well, forehead maybe. and everything, he was there for her there. Made and I think he... she's just seeing he's been t- his head's been turned by a pretty, by a pretty face. He, she knows that he's not the brightest bowl, but she doesn't necessarily need that. She's good got enough really. brains for the both of them. On Wednesday, he's got a good heart, which is what she needs after this horrible ordeal that she's been through. And you know, seeing what other the other kind of guys that go to a wedding high are, are like. Um, 
He's a rare, he's a rare one, is Ardy. We're going to Webby High. She's not anymore. What's she? Has she start? No, she, did she start university? She got kicked year? out. Did she? Oh, she yeah. Had to she got to restart it. Yeah, what's happening? She could have to do that soon. She shouldn't be banging about with Ardy. She should be getting ready to start, restart her her learning, mm. In it, in it, about now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uni starts around about now. Get your bloody backpack together, Amy, and stop fraternising with Ardy. On Wednesday, Deb's really nervous about this dinner and he mentions Amy's going to be Ardy's date. Um, and he, Ardy's like, no, 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 I don't need a date. I'm actually seeing someone already. And Deb's like, no, you're not. And he's like, yeah, her name's Monica. And and the family, we're only going to see see her when I'm not embarrassed to show her or off to you because you're all a bunch of useless twonks, basically. Amy and Ardy have a conversation before the lunch and she wants to know what is it, what are her intentions with Courtney? Like, it's like she's a dad interviewing a first date or something at the Well, door. she just can't believe She's like, it's what? all going to come out and you're, and you're really playing with fire because your dad's investing in this business and Ardy's looking a bit worried. And then in come, in come everybody for the lunch. So Deb, Darren and Courtney... And, Things um, are definitely quite tense between Darren and Courtney right from the beginning of the meal, aren't they? Well, she doesn't. She didn't want to come. I don't know what she thinks she's got to do that's any better than this. Darren is pleased with how helpful Ardy's been, and and Dev then makes a mistake because he is being overly chivalrous towards Courtney and completely ignoring Bernie, who's that was, also been that invited. Was, I, I enjoyed that. De- Dev on Wednesday was brilliant. Devin it up. He was so proper- he, <laughs> he sort of tucks Courtney's um, Courtney's chair, chair in, in and, and then, her drink and then and gives stuff. her a drink and then when Bernie's like where's my drink he's like here's some water to her and, and she's got her nose put right out of joint well she seemed to be kind of, at the beginning I think Bernie seemed to be finding it quite amusing because she knows that Courtney's not going to be interested in him or so she thought at that point I think she just found it funny thought, that he was you know chasing around after this pretty no, woman I that he doesn't Deb stand the chance with doing it to sort of be um, to sort of show off to Darren, like you know. Yeah, I'm he was. Too, so I, I don't. I don't think Bernie was actually worried at well, the beginning. Bernie I thought she just, just found it well, amusing. No, I think Bernie was thinking like I would think. Excuse me. I'm, I'm not also sure. Here, I'm also here. She a bit, a bit, but I think she just found I, it more amusing. Sorry, but I've I've had this feeling of going out with dinners with you before and other people. I am here as well. Thanks for my water. <laughs> anyway. Deb brings up Ardy's new f- mysterious flame. What's her name? Monica. Monica. And Amy and Bernie are listening with interest. And Courtney's like, oh yeah. <laughs> Can't do a Liverpudlian accent, so I'm just going to do pretend she's Cockney. <laughs> oh yeah. What? T- tell us all about her then. And he's like, oh, she's gorgeous. She's wonderful. She's in- so intelligent. And um, Courtney disappears off and texts Ardy to follow her. He follows her to the door and she starts snogging his face off in the vestibule. Disgusting. And, oh my goodness, Dev walks in on them. Of course he does. Well, I mean, they weren't being very discreet, were they? Can't, like, Courtney's well, just so time. thirsty for any kind of compliments. Yeah. And she's like, oh, you're quite pretty. And she's like... Well, she's not been um, trying to hide their relationship. It was bound to come out. She's been being very... Up front about it, and and well, she she enjoys like, the danger, she, doesn't she? she and if you're going to do that, one day you're going to get she's caught. She's so fed up with her relationship, but she's dragging Ardy in. Do you think that she does? Do you think that she wanted to get found out, or was it just like I I don't mind if I do? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> I I don't know what what thoughts she keeps in her head. She's she's clearly not happy being with Darren, but. On the other hand, she's she knows more than that happy she's to take his cash, though. Yeah, but I, I suppose at, at this point, she thought that she was going to, you know, if things did go sour between them, that she would be entitled to all his money. Well, and listen, to her, when she did sign a, she did sign a prenup, I assume. I thought she was a business genius, and she signed a document that says if you if you're go slagging it up, then you don't get any cash. She didn't. She didn't think about this at any point at all. Maybe she didn't sign it. Maybe Stephen Reed did his old forgery trick. Maybe he's a mate of Darren's. Maybe. <laughs> you know, if you marry for money, yeah, you end anyway. up paying for it. That's true. Mm. Um, Dev ends up, um, yeah, walking in, doesn't he? Well. 
What? And he's like, oh my goodness. And the cool is like, calm down, calm down. Go back to the table. And Dad's like, you are playing with fire, RG. Yeah, I've staked everything on this for you and your sister's future. Get back to the table and behave yourself. I love... Uh, yeah, I just, I think that Jimmy and, and Adam have got a brilliant father-son relationship. It's very, very believable that they have a joke together. It's clear when... When Ardy is embarrassed with Dev, I really feel it. But when Dev is telling him off, he's, again, like we wow, said before yeah, about him, great. can be very, very terrifying. He's like, you do, you go back. I, I think that they, they're they brilliant together. I love that scene. Yeah. And and De- Dev was really flopping between the comedy and the, the terror this was and the good. drama. This was, this was a very good part of Wednesday's episode, which yeah. was a good episode on the whole, I thought. So back at back at the table, Bernie's cornering Dev and she's asking he's asking him why did he go after Courtney and why can't you take um your eyes off her? And it, she's saying to him, like, don't show me up here, don't make me look stupid, because obviously if you're Bernie and your b- boyfriend's lusting after somebody who's half your age, you are gonna feel a bit of your nose know, gonna get put out of joint, right? Yeah. So Even things, if nothing's going to come from it, the fact that your boyfriend is... Well, showing, yeah, showing you up. Yeah. So things are very tense between Darren and Courtney in this meal. And then Darren says, right, I'm just going to come out with it now. Everyone, just so you know, Courtney's been having an affair with somebody and it's been going on for ages. And I bet she's texting him now because she keeps going on her phone and he keeps telling her to put her phone down. And he says, if I lay my hands on whoever it is, I'm going to do something terrible. And Courtney says, yeah, I am. I am having an affair. So what? He's kind, he's lovely, he's got great hair and he's hiding in plain sight. And then she storms off and Darren's just left kind of baffled. And But then he sort of rallies and says, well, better out than in. And he does a toast and um, he starts thinking during this meal. Darren and Bernie's um, little head clocks are ticking away. And uh, <laughs> then D- Darren decides that it probably is Dev because he's got great hair. He has. He has, and he's kind and lovely. And he looks. Yeah, yeah, the actor who plays Darren um, yeah. finds one of our tweets yeah, this week. What did he say? Like, I used to think I had good hair. Aww. <laughs> so um, Darren launches himself at Dev, and Ardy's like, No, it was me. Oh, dear. Um, Darren says, Well, I hope she's worth it, big boy. You're going to be spending the rest of your life stacking shells for your dad. And storms off. Dev. So rightfully cross, he rips into RD at, back at home. He tries to convince him that he's in love with Courtney. Then Courtney comes to the door saying, oh, Darren's kicked me out. <laughs> um, and then Dev says to her, we're well, not staying in here. And Ardy says, well, if she's going, I am. And Dev storms out. And it seems that she gets her way because she stays over on a Friday. She's still there in her mm-hmm. dressing gown. Asha, Asha's not impressed with this. And Dev is fuming in the morning on Friday and he hasn't been able to get in touch with, with Darren. So they storm off and then Courtney emerges from, from the bedroom, comes downstairs and Ardy's like falling over her and making her breakfast and uh, drinks and things. And she's stretching herself out, looking like the cat who's got the cream. In the shop later, um, I think Amy tells... Dev that she knew about the affair mm. and Ardy walks in kind of sheepishly and Dev says look I know you're probably overreacted but you need to listen to me you should not be throwing your future away for a bit of fun with <coughs> with a woman <coughs> they, he does like, acknowledge that he has also been a bit of a player in the past it, it's different isn't it because Dev back when he first came into the show he was he'd already he was a ladies man yeah he was he'd already well we know that he's had the the backstory if you haven't watched Coronation Street for for a long you know for years you probably don't know Dev's backstory as being a Lothario. and he had a string of women working in his chain of corner shops all of whom he had kids with and one of them is no longer in the show but Amber was one of his other daughters from a different mm. um, different girlfriend girl. <laughs> yeah and uh, Ardy and Asher were sort of the chosen family yeah I I wonder whether uh, like Dev was ever a bit useless like Ardy when he first got into the, the dating game. Or was well, he... before he discovered waistcoats. 
So, is he just like ashamed of Ardu that he hasn't picked up his natural schmoozing charms? Because he was well, he's got he a was woman. a proper charmer, wasn't There's... he, at the beginning of the day? The, the woman's got him. I think that's the difference. Ardu didn't go out to pick up this woman. He was preyed upon. Ardu wow. is no ladies' man, not in the slightest. Well, you've got, you got to learn somehow, haven't you? <laughs> Courtney and Ardu are having lunch in the bistro, and she's like, oh, can you buy this lunch for me because I don't have any money? Well, why are we in the bistro? Why are you drinking wine? For the second day in we the We can row. have ravioli and tin back home and a can of cider if you haven't got any money. <laughs> um, and she, yeah, she tells him that Darren's cut her off and he's starting divorce proceedings. And she phones Darren up and she's having a go at him saying, I'm going to take all your money. And he says, no, you're not. Check your prenup. I don't owe you anything. And she's suddenly, oh no, I didn't think this through. <laughs> I wish there was a section about divorcing your rich husband slash business partner in my MBA. <laughs> so she's, yeah, she's a bit flummoxed. And she she's also pointing out to him that she hasn't had a job because he didn't let her work. Um, doesn't have her own money. So she's just kind of adrift. And Ardy's urging her to sort of talk to the solicitor, her solicitor and get it sort of worked out. Um, then we get to see Darren coming to the shop later while Deb's in there. And he says, listen, mate, I saw, I know you didn't know about the affair, I believe you, but the deal's off. I'm, I can't work with somebody whose son is shucked up with my wife. And then he walks out and Dev's like, oh, no. Dev seems to get the impression from this conversation that if he can split Ardy and Courtney up, then he'll hit the deals back on. Mm. But I don't think that's going to happen. Is that where you reckon the story might go now? Dev's futile attempts to uh, break up love's young dream. I don't know. Dream. What are we supposed to think of Courtney and do we think that she's supposed to be a regular character? No, I don't think so. I think we're still supposed to be mightily suspicious of her. Well, she's a... I'm sorry, this is a really sexist thing to say, but she's clearly a gold digger, isn't she? She thought she could marry this man for his money and she's been quite upfront about the fact that she's only with him because he's rich. Right, yeah, yeah. So she, and she doesn't. She doesn't like him. She doesn't get on with him. He's been having an affair behind her back, so she decided to get back back at him by having an affair behind his back. Um, she's quite happy to divorce him. She's not sad in the slightest. She doesn't cry or miss him or say anything sentimental. She wants half of all of his money, and and then she forgets she signed a prenup. I don't know what she thinks. She, I don't. I don't understand what's gone through, through her head. I do. Get I'm trying to be really polite and feminist about this, but she honestly is a nightmare of a character, <laughs> like for feminists, isn't she? She's just like mm. the stereotypical fictional gold digging like. And she's bag. she's only with Ardy because well originally because she was fed up. Well, she with keeps not getting saying, any action from her she keeps husband who's always at work, indicating that Ardy is is special and kind. Yeah, she she does have some affection for him. But the thing him. is about it is that he's... She only thinks that because he says nice things about her. That's not how, what love mm. is, is it? No. And and with Ardy, he love, he falls in love very quickly. If you remember last yeah. year with Kelly... He was trying to marry Kelly last year. Yeah, within weeks of starting <laughs> dating her. So he's but he's back in another situation. His literal only experience of having a girlfriend is Kelly. So he, I wouldn't be surprised if he pops the question to Courtney. She's um, a man, honestly. You know, Courtney, by, is by the time the months out, it's a, sort of a, a man eater. She she's got she's very shallow. I'm not impressed with her as a character. I'm finding it difficult. I don't like the storyline from the beginning because I thought it, she was predatory. There's been no sort of analysis of that aspect of it whatsoever. But do you think that if... If the, if the, if the genders were reversed, the sexes were reversed, then this would be... Oh, yeah, absolutely. Grim. Deb's not going to allow um, Courtney to stay yeah. under... Live with number, in number seven. So he, he's probably going to ship her off to the precinct or something because that's where all the cool kids hang out at the moment. And and then... The only way to... And maybe... And Ardy, if... if uh, Ardy said, when was it, Wednesday's episode? If she goes, then I'm going with her. So I guess Ardy might end up wanting to move out, but I wonder whether he's going to be half as attractive to Courtney if you know, he doesn't have the... the, the, the it's not, it's not, I suppose it's not like that Deb is cutting him off. She's still. He's still part of the Allahan Empire, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, I just, I don't know whether the appeal will still be there. And it was almost like, what what did she love more, Ardy or the excitement of having a secret affair? Yeah. And now it's all out in the open. 
um, it's maybe not going to be quite so appealing anymore. I mean, I feel like the only way to redeem Courtney now is to have her stand on her own two feet and say, it's time for me to stop. Um, like using my looks to try to get by in life. Yeah, and it, it just doesn't use my brain. Doesn't because... feel to me like there's gonna be redemption for Courtney in the end. No, can't. Ardy's gonna get his heart broken, and she's gonna be like, "Well, it was it was good while it lasted," and she'll will she go back to Darren? Maybe you know Darren's Darren's um that the the scene when when it came out that she had been having an affair with somebody, I can't remember if it was before or after it was revealed it was Ardy, that Darren did look kind of devastated. He And he was very, very embarrassed by the whole thing, isn't he? Who? Darren. Right. Mega embarrassed that his wife has been, you know, he's suspected her of having an affair, he's but the fact that it was her. with Ardy behind his back all yeah. this time. But I think he probably would take her back because I don't think he necessarily loves her that much he likes having a bit of a dolly bird on his he arm so she comes her, crawling back to him the same way he views his car you know she's good looking on his arm she's a possession that boosts his reputation makes him look good mm. that's that's the only reason that she he's with her and, and there was kind of a bit of depth to her character originally when she says that she was his protege and she had a brilliant business mind and he selected her because of that and then she he seduced her and forced her to marry him and now he ignores her and it's kind of I feel incredibly unsympathetic, I'm yeah. afraid. And, and the fact that Amy is still hanging around this story just kind of leads me to think, well, the end game here is that Ardy and Amy will get together at the end. Now, whether that's going to be in a matter of weeks or months or is it going to be a nice little Christmas bunk up for Ardy and know. Amy, I don't know. But I, well, yeah, I certainly don't see a rosy future for Courtney and Ardy. Courtney, she's just using him. She does feel like she's she's using him to boost her ego because she she thinks that... Darren only values her for her looks, which Kel surprise. Um, yeah. If that's how you caught him, then you can't be yeah. surprised by that. But she also, she, you know, Ardy's telling her all the time, oh, you're so smart, you're so wonderful. And, and yeah, she's just using it for an ego boost. Yeah. But what, you know, she wants to redeem herself, move into a, um, a precinct flat, get a job at Rutland's, invent a new sort of pasty with your business MBA, and make fortunes, uh, turning Rutland's into a <laughs> chain of nationwide bakeries that rival Greg's. Yeah, the other, then the, I'll be impressed. The other bit of this that's kind of interesting to me is the the Dev and Ardy dynamic because Ardy is kind of saying to Dev, "Well, you you got to support me. You're are you choosing Darren over me?" Because that Dev was like. Say, oh, you know, you've ruined the business. I'm gonna, I need to go make it up with him. And he, he, Dev did seem to be more invested in, or more interested in patching things up with Darren than Ardy's feelings during this. And that's all gonna play into this lingering sense of um, favoritism that that Ardy thinks Dev has for Alia, not Alia, um, what's her name, Asha, Asha. And, and not him. He's gonna feel he's feeling rejected again for the second time in as many years. I Dev is choosing story... someone else over him. Honestly, don't think they're going to go that route with this. I don't know. I think they might. Especially if if Courtney moves out or when she moves out, because she doesn't say she's not saying, it wouldn't surprise me if Ardy says, well, yet again, you know, you, you've picked someone else over me. I don't need you anymore, Dad. I'm off. And I, and I think that the fact that they've built up this... Um, this tension between them over the years, here and there, I think it's just hopefully pay off in this story. What what is missing a little bit is Asha. Um, throughout the whole of this, she's been fairly <laughs> absent, hasn't she? She was there at breakfast um, in today's episode, making a couple Disdainfully of painfully uh, shoving bread in her face. Yeah, making a few snide remarks, but I think that that, that Asha and Ardy and and Tanisha and Adam really gel very well together on screen and it would I'd be interested in hearing more about what Asha has to think or just just having a situation a, a, some store some scenes sorry where Asha and Ardy are having a kind of brotherly sisterly heart-to-heart kind of argument niggle off you, you know what I mean 
it, it feels like she was only there in today's episode because she kind of had to be, and and I wish that they thought a little bit more how they could integrate her. Can you explain what you mean by niggle off, please, just so that people don't get the wrong. I idea. don't even know what I mean by niggle off. It's just a word that you know. They're, they're having a bit of a uh, irritating each other, airing airing their brotherly sisterly spat against one another. Yeah, that that's what this that's what this needs, and it feels like this character who should play a bigger part doesn't actually have one do you do you feel sorry for darren in any way here do, does he deserve this has he mistreated courtney well, this bad that he only, deserves to be publicly humiliated we've only seen courtney's sort of account of their relationship he doesn't treat her particularly well she does seem like an accessory but then she's also been given everything she wants he sort of treats her like a pet really like if you want this you can have it mm. here's your spa day here's your car here's your boy to drive you around i still yeah. don't understand why she needs a driver unless she's a, like a, a, an alcoholic from morning to night <laughs> um okay well that, that that got a bit more chat it certainly got a lot more conversation out of it than the stew story but i think we've uh, we've exhausted it now, i just but... really dislike courtney's character for how she... just I, I don't. No, it doesn't feel like there's any depth to her, and it. Oh, We're being told know. there is, but it doesn't feel like there is, and she's just looks just to look at her so utterly shallow and superficial, like I can't you said. Say that. Look, I you know said not, it yourself, aren't you? I know, but they, you're not they, supposed they, to judge people by the way they look. They've but... made Stephanie Dave. It's Stephanie Davis, isn't it? The place that know. they've made her look absolutely perfect for this storyline, caked in makeup, fake eyelashes hair scraped back they've done a really good job of making her a, a proper know. dolly bird this is i guess this is one of the reasons i don't like this storyline is because it's forcing me to judge somebody by the way that they look because there's nothing really else to say about courtney she's she's completely playing up to the stereotype of the way that she looks mm. which is un, it's kind of unfortunate and they can sort of write in as many lines as they like about her say i've got an mba in business yeah. But I just don't... I mean, she's not using that on Ardy on the sofa, <laughs> is she? Um, well, I'm sure Ardy will... I find it very uncomfortable. Ardy will see through her one of these days. Um, right, the shell shock. So the Paul stuff, let's move on to that. I, I still am kind of pretty in shock with how today's episode ended. I'd, I'd got no idea whether it was revealed in advance that Shelley would be popping her clogs in today's episode. But if not, fair play to Coronation Street. She was clearly, you know, they, they certainly telegraphed it, didn't they, with all those, the, the coughing that she's been doing over the okay. last few days. But I so just, tiny I, I wasn't ready, I wasn't <laughs> ready to say goodbye to her. I love her so much, Shelley. When I was When I said on Wednesday, on the I Street Talk show, oh, I bet that she's going to die during the wedding. I was like, I know, but that's too soon. She looks, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't look healthy, but it didn't no. look like she was, she was on her last legs. So that completely blindsided me. And, and it's also, like, oh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens here now. It wasn't just that. It was the fact that she was in the middle of a storyline. Yeah. Good job, Corey. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right because the, what they're what, left with is like, let, let's let's, let's now? yeah, let, let's <laughs> let's run through it and then we'll we'll see what we think. So Wednesday's episode, we didn't have any of this on Monday, and Paul heading off to Shelley's after getting a letter about having a palliative nurse um look after him. He's he's still somewhat in denial about the um you know, what about what's going to be coming to him fairly soon. He knows that you know he hasn't. He, we do. He doesn't know how long he's got left, but he doesn't want to give up on his freedom and independence quite yet. But so anyway, he, he heads off to Shelley's house, um, and they just, they have a lovely scene together. This, this is why I, one of the reasons I'm so gutted about Shelley's death. The, the, some of the like she's she's just been funny. I her her sense of humour, her her dry, cynical, wry, um, dark ga gallows humour about herself has been consistently brilliant all the way through and it has lent a sense of um maybe joy is not the right word just just the right level of humor to a really tragic story because i don't we, you know we don't like the, the the miserable death stories maybe this is just what Sinead's story needed for you Gemma. a few more hearty laughs yeah i it, i just really appreciated the balance that they've had with this and and the fact that Paul's laughing along as well. They're always, it's always like they're having a, 
Yeah, stand-up comedian off, isn't it? She, Shelley's clearly the master at this, but Paul starts joining it. He, like, he says, oh, I won't get a 2024 calendar, you know? <laughs> he, she's teaching him it's okay to... Cope. To, to, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good coping method. And, he, and, and what she's able to offer him, Billy isn't, because all Billy's doing is being really practical and saying, oh, you need to get that wheelchair, we need to get your nurse, we Can need I to get say... your stair lift. I'm just going to kind of wring my hands and say, oh, this is so tragic. And, and Shelley is a, a, like a, a little island of where, where Paul can not forget about it, but just have a laugh, which you just can't Except with Billy. in a different way. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think Billy or Summer have a sense of humour. <laughs> no, do you? I don't, I don't think they do. I don't think so. Can you imagine so. living with them too? Yeah, although when um, when Summer dressed up as a piece of Battenberg cake for today's episode, maybe that was her attempt. I don't think that was supposed to be funny. <laughs> um, so anyway, she's, she's talking about um, Mario, her palliative nurse, who's apparently ace. Um, and she says, look, Paul, you, nobody knows how long they've got left. <sighs> so true, so true. Um, why not make the best of it? Get somebody to help you. Get a wheelchair. It is going to give you a bit of independence and freedom while you still got it. Go on, it's going to yeah. be fine. So, um, oh yeah, then, they, then we have a scene where they're planning her funeral music later. They're having a laugh about that. Um, and <laughs> and then there's the scene about, um, what was it? She... she um, did she, she she makes a joke about him being on the turn, doesn't he? Like that she's making out that he fancies her, and he's like, "Oh, sad off." Oh, no, yeah, I don't. that's right. Yeah, it was just so. It was so lovely. So that's the last time we see her. That's the last. That's the last thing we do. When that's the last thing we see. He, she's kind of like makes a joke and says, "Oh, you fancy me, don't you, Paul?" He's like, "Yeah, whatever." And then what's his face turns up. A PA turns up. Paul hobbles out and then the last shot I think ever that we get to see of Shelley is her it's just looking like a little little miserable she's she's been putting on a front for him yeah she, hasn't she yes it's for herself she's coping with her situation by laughing about it but she's showing him she's she's doing it for him she's feeling absolutely rotten I don't know whether she knows you know well why would you know that you've literally got hours days left but the fact that despite this just how bad she's feeling she's thinking of Paul she's almost putting Paul's happiness above herself her own maybe it just shows what strength of character she is and why I I absolutely oh, adore her <laughs> and I wasn't ready for her to go no, I didn't want to say <laughs> um, so anyway there's at the end of the episode Paul gets home and, and Billy's there with his new wheelchair it, it's just yeah the Going from one thing, which is having a laugh about their horrible situation, their impending doom, and kind of forgetting about how you know, tragic it is, to going home and being confronted with Billy there as a wheelchair, it's like... With a wheelchair. Yeah, what did I say? You said as a wheelchair. As like a wheelchair. It's... Come and sit on my lap, Paul. <laughs> Tell me what <laughs> you want for Christmas. <laughs> um, it's the, 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 the contrast is so stark. And it, it, but, but Paul... You know, he needs to accept that the wheelchair is his future. I think that Billy's right. He's just he's just a fun sponge, isn't he? Really. What? Which one? Billy. Billy, Billy is. He's like anyway, anyway. Come and come and have a sit in this. Um, well, let he, anyone... and he's like, oh, I wish it was me that wasn't you. And yeah. What are you gonna next, say next? Okay, so um, Friday. Also, can I can I say as well? Still, and and every time this story comes back from its little hiatus, whether it's a week and a half or three weeks or whatever, Paul's deteriorating condition. Peter Ash is doing brilliantly, isn't he? I'm glad that he's wow decided by the end of the week to go into a wheelchair because I'm getting worried about his. The, the actor's physical... Peter's posture. Well, the thing is, I've heard of actors pushing themselves and, and doing stuff and stunts, and I know that, that Coronation Street's probably got a really good health and safety, you know, trying to help make sure this doesn't happen, but it's probably really tempting to really push yourself because um, you're doing it for people who have MND and you're trying to portray this in a realistic way, mm. and if you're probably, you know, thinking to yourself, well, you know, I can straighten up and walk you know mm. after this who am i to complain about a small amount of discomfort but you can actually really hurt yourself mm. i mean P peter has clearly he's done gonna get to have a sit. he's clearly done the research i mean i wonder like has he got somebody training him no you need to walk like this no know. that's not how you should limp I, mean, I don't i don't know i've never met anyone with mnd but 
I'm complete. I completely believe that you know sometimes when actors put on a limp or something, you can tell. I'm reminded of um, a scene when when Leanne was pregnant with Ollie and she was kind of waddling down the street. I I I didn't. I don't know. I thought it was good enough for me, but people were saying that's not how pregnant people walk. We change it no. But um, this this is so believable. I'm. I, I didn't think I'd be so impressed and I was worried at the start of this story that maybe Peter wouldn't be up to it. I, I don't know why, but um, he's been absolutely superb. Yes, he's going to be in his wheelchair a lot more now, so we won't have to do quite so much as that, but there's still the the rest of his physical deterioration we're going to see. He's going to become... He's not going to be able to move any part of his body, is he? His arms, anything... So I still think that there's some more brilliant, brilliant physical acting to come for him. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm dead impressed. I can't sing his praises any more for the, for, than I'm already doing for this. Anyway, what? I was going to say with you saying about about Leanne, oh, she's not walking properly. People say that about women all the time, about especially celebrities. Oh, she's not pregnant. It's fake belly. Oh, it's bent when she leaned down. Oh, it creased in the wrong way. She's not <laughs> holding it right. She's 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 crouching and she wouldn't be able to walk in those heels etc etc yeah um i'm glad that we also uh share that for fictional characters too because they won't want them to miss out on the misogyny well well quite um just before we move on i, I don't even know where we are I, this, well, this, this is reminding this is reminding me of um mark charnock's performance in emmerdale when marlon had his stroke that we saw and, and that you know that I went straight from, I guess, normal Marlon to I've had a stroke and can barely move from, you know, from what little clips that we saw. Whereas we're, and, and, that, and then he worked his way out of it and we're kind of seeing the reverse here with Paul, aren't we? His gradual decline. And I'm wondering whether we're going to get a, you know, a, a Marlon rivaling performance from Peter Ash well, in his you know, final final days on the show. doing an know. excellent job. So, so as good. As far as I can tell. Anyway, anyway. Um, so Friday's episode, um, Paul is is very wobbly and is leaving as he's leaving the flat in the morning. He's still refusing to use a wheelchair. I think didn't Wednesday's episode end with them agreeing they would put it under a blanket or something or a bit of tarpaulin to try and, and you know out of sight, out of mind. But he, he's he's clearly going to need that imminently from the way he's walking on Friday's episode. Um, we have a little scene. Nothing really went happen with this in the end, did it? Bernie over here's. Daniel and Daisy talking about wanting to get a tablet for, for Bertie and she's like, oh, I can get you one of those. But I guess it was just to remind well, us that she's... that's going to surely come up. Yeah, yeah, that, that'll, that'll come up next week, I guess, when the whole, um, when her stash of, <laughs> of uh, illegal, illegal goods. goods gets uncovered. Um, so Billy and Paul also notice that Todd's new laptop is the same as the one they got from Summer and they're kind of somewhat suspicious to hear that he got it from Big Garth and Bernie's looking very shifty in the background so uh, Paul goes around to see Bernie later on at number five She and discovers her with this massive load of dodgy looking boxes so he takes a look and sees that they've got Shelley's name on them and he quickly twigs what she's been up to and she's like look son and I feel so bad for Bernie during this she's like trying to get his permission to be you know, involved in this dodgy scheme, isn't she? Even though she's risking something massively here, she could end up going to prison. But she's saying, oh, I've, I've, like she, she brings out the tin of money, doesn't she, that she's got already. And she's I'm doing this for you, and I know it's bad. And, and he's got a real tough decision to make here, like whether to say, no, mum, you've got to stop it, or, yeah, I do need the money. But I thought that that scene was very nicely done. Um, And she's like, Paul, it's, it's just... Turn a blind eye, son. It's going to be better all round. Um, back at home... Well, he oh. points out, doesn't he? Because I've forgotten that this happened because it feels like it was so long ago in the storyline, but it wasn't. What? When Paul first got his diagnosis, he was stealing cars to make money. Yeah. And, and now, that really wasn't that long ago, was it? What, and now three, his mum is months? sort of dealing in stolen goods, kind of? I don't mm. really know. But I'm st- but, and that reminds me, I'm still wondering... Is one of Paul's final acts going to be, you know, a key piece in Stephen's comeuppance? Because he was around when Rufus was murdered, wasn't he? He was stealing Rufus's car. And it uh... does make me wonder, you know, are they going to have to 
you know, uh, will, will Paul be interviewed? Will they be able to interview him, depending on, you know, the state of his health? I, I really don't know. Well, I mean, they what, they didn't make any allowances for poor old Laura when she had stomach cancer they and did, was they dying. Did not. And they, they did not. They well arrested remembered. her. Yeah. Um, anyway, so um, Paul's kind of left us in a bit of a quandary and he goes back to to the flat and tells Billy what's been going on and Billy's like, well, thank, thanks for letting me know. So he's all he doesn't quite you know put in an order for his a laptop of his own, but he is fairly cool with it and says, "Look, I can't tell your mum what she should or shouldn't be doing. I don't agree with it, but let's just leave it there." He also does say, "We could use the money, actually, couldn't he?" Well, he says, <laughs> "He I probably checked... has a bit of a pray about that one later." I checked in the Bible and I can't find anything about ordering stuff off a catalogue with a dead woman's credit card and then not going to pay yeah, it back. Yeah, so I'm going it. to assume it's probably okay. I mean, what would Jesus do? Yeah. <laughs> he probably would say, nice. Nice. <laughs> um, anyway, you all get, you'll get a free laptop, don't you? That's what he'd say. Everyone gets a free laptop. <laughs> um, anyway, um, Paul says he's going to go and see Shelley this afternoon because he's found out that she really is into gospel music. Apparently. Maybe she's just winding him up. That's not exactly, that's exactly the sort of thing that Shelley would do. <laughs> really you can imagine him going there to the flat. <laughs> yeah, he spends pressing. all this money on this, yeah. this rare violin and she goes, you're bloody twonk. I don't know what the uh, hell is this? Oh, I'm a, I'm a Swifty. <laughs> Um, anyway, he he's you know, he wants to thank her for all the help that she's given him over the year, years, weeks. So he's gonna he's gonna buy her apparently the the biggest gospel vinyl which she hasn't already got. I mean, if I was a mm. if I knew someone was a big fan of a particular piece yeah. of music and they didn't have long left, I'd assume that they would probably want to get it in quick. They've got yeah. that they want already. It's like saying. I heard, Michael, that you're a Nintendo fan, so I've bought you a Game Boy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Great. Um, anyway, so he, he's out in a wild later location shoot. Yes. <laughs> today's, if, if Gemma ever, you know, even more so than usual, doesn't appear to know what went on in today's Coronation Street, it's How because she was doing a very important job of trying to find the location of Paul's little tumble here. And she did it, didn't you? This was what, a quarter of the way through the episode, he had a fall and thought, Gemma, you've got to find out where it is. And you spend the rest of the next half an hour hunting around on Google Earth trying to find it. And you did. It's a place called Graffiti Palace. And it's just to the um, east of uh, Manchester. Media of, City. Of Media City. Alfred. Yeah, exactly. So or Manchester. Another, we've added it to our map already. And another one to visit That's the next right. time. That's right. We added it to our map. I don't... Is it kind of bad taste to recreate the scene when we go yes. and visit it? No, it is. Well, no. people have... You know, when, when we go to Coronation Street, the tour, they always say that people are recreating the scene underneath the builder's yard flat where Tina's dead on the floor. I see laid out on the Kylie floor. Kylie dying as well. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I think... I think you know, well, Shelley would take it all in good fun. I don't Shelley know would about think it was Paul. Brilliant. Yeah, she would. <laughs> oh, Shelley. Um, right, so um, he, oh. he's he's there. He's out by this graffiti wall, and um, well, he collapses. Yeah, he falls over, and he's looking very, very frustrated by himself, and uh, tries to heave himself up with the stick again. Such a great performance, and I really felt every ounce of strength that he was using to try and get himself back on his feet, but to no avail. I was expecting and then he cries him to get back. mugged. Yeah, I know. Well, his AirPods were just there on the floor, weren't they? Free AirPods. Yeah, and he he's like, oh, he can't, he almost can't bring himself to ask for Billy's help because Billy's probably such a downer and would say, well, I told, oh. I told you, Billy. I told you, Paul. If you'd have had your wheelchair, wheelchair, none of this would have happened. Mm. You know. So, um, no, he's, he, he just does He knows that if Paul, if Billy comes along, he's going to, you know, he's going to be giving away, he's going to have to be admitting defeat. He does eventually go for the wheelchair, and uh, I thought it was interesting that it was Todd was the one who he hailed well, he to come Todd, and rescue yes. him, and his mate Todd who helps him up, and uh, and then and they go back to back to the car after he's had a wee up against the wall. I don't want to know about the. Did you miss logistics. that while you were looking for the? I know he was doing it. I'm just telling you, don't tell me the logistics. I'm not <laughs> interested. Is that the scene that we recreate when we go and visit the filming location, weeing up against the wall? Anyway. Illegal, should be illegal. 
probably is. They get into the car. Todd's mm-hmm. like, why don't you contact Billy? Paul says, oh, he just pushing, he'd be pushing his wheelchair agenda. It's typical, isn't it? First it's the gay agenda. Now it's the wheelchair agenda. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then it's the Jesus ag- agenda. Probably fairly bottom on Billy's list, it appears at the moment. The Jesus agenda. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, Paul says, look, these wheelchairs aren't coffins, you know. They are to help you. Don't... Don't, you know, give up on the idea already. It's okay. okay. Don't knock it till you tried it. I feel very sympathetic to Paul. It's okay to be upset. Mm. Uh, That's what I like about the storyline. It's sort of showing and validating. Yeah. Uh, And every, you know, not everybody who's in a wheelchair has the same story. No. Um, But this is just a different story. Tell you what we need. We need we need Maud Grimes to come Mm. back on the street. She's not actually dead, everybody. Give a go. Yeah, and it's it's another, like, if if they don't have Izzy have another scene with Paul now that he's in his wheelchair, they are seriously missing a trick here. She was brilliant in that one scene they did use her for a couple of months ago, saying, you know, it's... I can't even... Did, was, the, was the purpose of that scene just to say, you know, wheelchairs can be helpful? I don't know. But just, I really, really, really hope we get one more Izzy scene, at least with her. With yeah. him, sorry. Anyway, um, so they get back to, um, back to the flat and Todd kind of drops him off there and Billy's very concerned about what's been going on and Paul opens up about what happened and he's like oh I just fell I couldn't get back up again I lay there feeling hopeless and helpless and I broke Shelley's record oh no <laughs> she's never gonna hear it now I think I, I'm okay, sure we weren't dead. the only ones thinking oh what, what record did Shelley have the most sarcastic MND sufferer <laughs> in Weatherfield or the uh, the, the shortest lived character of it I don't know but um, anyway, he's like, I never want to use a wheelchair. He just, he, he's, he feels like it's giving up. But um, he, he has, does. Next scene, he's, he's being pootled along by Summer up and down the ramp and away all the time, isn't it? Here's a question, right? If he gets drunk in the Rovers and goes home in his wheelchair, can he be arrested for being a drunk driver? And that is a serious question. No, I'm going to say hey, no. Why not, though? I don't think you're gonna. Wouldn't that be? Wouldn't that be a sort of a? Because a, I think you can get. You can be if you're drunk on a bicycle. You, you it counts. You're not allowed. I don't think you're gonna hurt anyone in a wheelchair. Oh really? You must of... be kidding. Oh yeah, remember that policeman that <laughs> is yeah. over the Yeah, he nearly killed a man with hers. <laughs> Um, anyway, they they basically they he they persuade him to go into the pub, and it was it um, echoed the scene where Ryan built up the courage to go in a few yeah. months ago, didn't it? He's like, I don't think I'm ready for that Do you think that that's yet. why the Rovers are so empty these days? Because everyone's battling in the demons and they don't want to go in. Yeah, everyone's got so much drama <laughs> going on. I don't know. <laughs> I can't face everyone. Yeah. Then he's like, no, please come in. Um, so so he goes in there and it's kind of... It's fine. It, it's not straight away. Kind of, th- There are people looking at him. They kind of turn around and look. And, and even Daisy's there looking... I could, no, no, actually, no. Daisy kind of welcomes him, doesn't she? Which makes sense considering how close she is to, or she's been to Ryan and, and knowing what a big deal this must be for Paul because it was for Ryan. But people have a look a bit, but then Daniel comes in and breaks the ice by uh, kind of saying, oh, I hope this wheelchair doesn't mean that you're not going to you know, get up to the bar when it's your round. And then just like you can see this huge weight lifting off Paul's um, shoulders and they... Go and have a lovely drink together for the rest of the evening. Well, they're all having a good old booze up, aren't they? Everyone's buying rounds and they're yeah. all relaxing and having a chat. And... and But he has the lovely chat with Bernie saying, kind of giving her permission to carry to on these crim. underhand deals. He's like, yeah, I, I'm going to need that money. There's no other way that we could possibly get it. So you you go ahead with it, ma'am. And then we have a scene with Billy and Paul in back in the flat later. Just well, reflecting also, on what a lovely time they had. This is when also Paul says, I, I never got a chance to give this to, to Shelley. I better give it to her. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And this is when he rings her up. And leaves I, a, I, I, he leaves I, a really cheery message on her Well, voice. he does at the end, doesn't he? Because we mm. see him phoning her and then they cut to, Sh- to Shelley's flat. And I think I said to you... Is she dead? Is she dead already? But not no. actually thinking that they would do it. And then back. you and then you see the paramedics turn up at the flat with her uh, with her carer and saying oh, she hasn't got a pulse. She's on the bed. And the, just the way that they delivered it, like I wondered whether I wondered whether she was just going to be in a really bad state and maybe be taken to hospital and maybe you know die in a few episodes <laughs> time or something. But that one line, she hasn't got a pulse. 
that to me dead. was just like ripping my heart. I was like, no, I'm not. I oh, she's, I can't believe she's it. Made such a big impression. Such a great impression. What a, what a thing to do in oh, such a short brilliant. amount of time. How many episodes has she been in? Ten, if that. And and re- and a really, I uh, don't know how they pulled it off. Really, they've Corey's obviously taken a lot of care with this. Mm. Um, and I don't know. I don't know who that they spoke with, or it must be really hard as a writer who doesn't have MND and perhaps I don't know I don't know everyone's personal situations but I'm assuming everyone on the staff doesn't have MND right I think that's fair fair no but we do know that Dan Brocklebank yeah I know but I'm talking about the writers you know they're writing they're writing jokes and quips for Shelley here it must be quite difficult. Yeah, to you're put right. Those actually, like, words into is this okay mouth. to say this? Yeah, is that you know? Did they is get that free reign? And you're right. Does uh, she did she come up with anything herself? I don't know. Well, she did doesn't they get have MND from... though, does she? No, I know. So I know that. Yeah. I, I wonder whether, as part of their work with the MND Society, have they met oh, anyone? Oh, can you imagine? A bit like Shelley. Can you imagine them going? Okay, well, I think we've got enough information there about the physical side. So, any good jokes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we don't want to make it too depressing because we're you just know, hoping for some funny one-liners. Who got, yeah, got any? Good, is there an MND joke book? Is there like a Christmas cracker? The thing joke is, book? people, you know, even you know, when my mum was at the hospice, she was still kind of yeah. having having a good laugh about them things about saying, "Oh, well, you know, going and have a nice spa," and that's you know, people can. People are all different. People are all entitled to however they want to. Would find it behave. No, yeah, exactly. There are some people that probably don't don't but, like it. Yeah, I wonder. There are probably some MND sufferers out there who are watching. Well, I would Shelley imagine it's probably more of the but... family members who mm. might. People are very good at. Yeah, I mean, I if I if I was in this situation and I felt that I wasn't strong enough to, um, you know, crack the jokes or or make you know be be like Shelley, I'd be thinking, oh, am I? Are they are they saying that I'm rubbish? For, no, well, but, uh, you can't I, speculate. I I would hope that people are like us watching Shelley and kind of finding some kind the of comfort is, in the fact. That... To me, I think that they've done in they've done storylines with with terminal diagnosis before. I didn't watch any of the Sinead stuff. I'm assuming it wasn't a barrel of laughs. No. So I think it's appropriate that they tackle some of these with a bleak black sense of humour. I think even, I think with the Alma story, I mean, that was obviously terrible as well, but I think that Alma might have had a few, you know, there dark were a few jokes. few dark jokes in there, yeah. I mean, Ollie wasn't funny at all. <laughs> no, no. Um, oh, anyway, so what's, what's going to happen now then? Oh, gosh, when Paul finds out, it. I almost don't want to watch the scene where he finds out. I'm actually so sad and it makes me feel... I'm sort of thinking forwards to when Paul died. I don't know what it's happening. Well, the, Paul's going to suddenly get a massive reality check, isn't he? Oh, because but he's already it, had so many. He's He really has had enough. The the thing with, uh, uh, you know, Shelley's has had a bit of a cough this week, but she still, you know, to me, didn't seem well, she was days fine. away from death. She was... Speaking, she was... Relatively. She, she could move around. And... Yeah, and that's going to make Paul think... I could, you go know, any I could drop dead at any minute. Maybe it's going to make Horrific. him embrace life even more. I don't know. I would hope that that's kind of the message that we get. He's obviously going to find it gut wrenchingly, heartbreakingly hard awful. But I would hope that he might be inspired to to live his life to the fullest because know, that's yeah. what Shelley wanted. She wanted him to not um, wallow. But he's going to be so isolated now too because. Not only is his friend who's the only one that can really understand what he's going through gone, but also nobody else really has the same sense of humour as he does because he's made a few jokes like he did with Shelley, but whenever he does, all of his friends and family kind of give him this like rabbit in the headlights kind of look. Yeah. And it's not the same thing Gemma's to make a joke. Gemma's been good with him, but... But you can't make your own jokes to somebody no. who's got MND. I don't no, know. No, he's really lost a real lifeline there. Um, but yeah, ho- I, I would I hope that the lesson say. that she taught him is going to help, you know, oh, give him a bit of, of a lightness in, in over the next few weeks and months. But I, I, how do you think he's going to find out? Is it going to be like, is, is Bernie going to go there to, to, to get a to few get more dodgy cash. laptops or something and then find that? I think Shelley's PA is... will phone him up. 
Do you reckon? I mean, well, they're going to find the, the missed calls, aren't they? Yeah, I guess so. And they'll be like, sorry, mate. She bought it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. Gosh, gosh, gosh. Are we going to see her funeral? Maybe. I, th- I think it would be really powerful if we did. I mean, the, the fact that they were planning the funeral this week, yeah. Paul knows what she wants. But it's going to be so difficult for him. But then you got Todd to help him, and maybe that's why it was good to have Todd being the one to you know, rescue Paul this week to bring him back into yeah, the storyline. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we got to go. We got, are we, we're going to move on. That 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 was very well done. I I wasn't expecting that today. Wow. Um, so the Cassie storyline. This one um, I didn't think was, you know, it it it, it plodded along fine this week but um i think it was more the, the evelyn and roy <laughs> stuff that was um the standout for me so um let's let's remind ourselves because i can't remember much about what's been going on with old Cass this week well tyrone and cassie are how, how was that me passing over to you was that better than the last time you flicked your hands at me you don't right take over gladly tyrone Takes Cassie to takes the girls to the bus stop, and he's clearly not ha- not comfortable leaving Cassie in charge at this point. Um, and she she can kind of tell that she's being kind of given the cold shoulder. Well, not really, but she's not being trusted. Mm. Um, Evelyn, meanwhile, is miserable in the flat. She's got hot water. This was during like the heat wave. We've just come out of the thirty degree plus heat wave that we've been having, which I have written complaints about, and I think they're doing something about it now. Um, <laughs> so she's, she's yeah, cold. And it was quite funny. Obviously, they can't predict what the weather's going to be like, so they wrote this months in advance. But the idea that Evelyn is complaining about how cold she is during one of the hottest days mm. of the year, and Roy's telling her it's slightly inclement weather, was just so on the nose for both those characters. Hello. It made me laugh. Mm. It felt appropriate, even though they obviously didn't mean it to... Yeah to be that way so um so Roy yeah Evelyn's complaining about being cold and she's also complaining about Tyrone taking Cassie in saying he's a fool and Roy's saying that she he wants to give his mum another chance and Cassie says well you you you're one to talk you're soft as well look at you know you're giving a somewhere for Lauren to live then she gets a phone call from Fizz Evelyn does doesn't she yes. yeah Evelyn shows up at the garage up at the garage to check on Cassie who's still working there and um when Tyrone says that she's doing all right she's like mm, I don't don't know if I believe this and I've also been speaking to Fizz and she obviously doesn't know that Cassie's had a relapse you you need to tell her and then they start having an argument and then Roy Roy's walking the dog that's why he's there but it was a bit weird to see Roy in the Let's pop up in the garage in the garage and he says everyone we need to go and discuss this calmly in the cafe which I thought was just him talent for business I'm sure that this he is goes why... to the garage when he needs to get his woody serviced <laughs> this is what um, Jenny needs to do more of just roaming the streets going you having an argument have it at the pub <laughs> no there's nothing here that alcohol can solve two for one cocktails <laughs> So Cassie and Tyrone versus Evelyn and Roy at the cafe. Roy, Roy's a bit of a fence sitter, but he eventually suggests that Cassie and Evelyn move into the flat together and Evelyn's having none of it. So then he thinks of another thing. Why doesn't Lauren sublet the flat and Evelyn move in with him? So, so confusing. So the music, the, oh, yeah, the musical I chairs. Earlier that, I said earlier that nobody's living Coronation in the flat. I forgot Street. that Lauren's move there. Yeah, it really, really is. So she's living in the flat. Evelyn's living with Roy and Tyrone and the girls are just living at number nine. At number nine, like they should have been doing all along. So then we get to see Fizz for the first time in Yeah, months. that was a nice surprise. She's on the Zoom call. This is the one good thing about this is over the last few years, really, because since COVID, video calling has such become the norm, hasn't it? No, it hasn't. Well, no, the it's norm. Not, not, no, not the norm, but it's not you know, beforehand. People we didn't really do it. it. And and now it's something that's much more... Um, you, they use it when they when they need to. I feel like they could use it more, but um, it was good to see Fizz's face. And uh, Tyrone just finishes talking to her as Cassie comes in. Mm-hmm. And... It reminded me a bit of um, when um, when Lorna Nadler was away and then they had Ed doing the video calls yeah. with her. So um, Cassie is pleased to hear that... She's going to be staying. 
I don't know what that means. Where, Hope's happy. Where, where, where are you? Wait, staying with him for a bit longer. Yeah. But what? She's not though. She she's moving in. Oh right. no, she's staying with what? Ro- Ro- no, she's staying with Tyrone. <laughs> it is really this whole story right, is okay. just various Evelyn, people house swapping. Isn't Evelyn's it? with Cassie Roy. Home, this is perfect. Lauren's title for it. in the flat by herself. Myself, Cassie, myself. Tyrone, and the girls are in number nine. Yes. Yes. Okay. So she, Cassie's like, oh good. I'm glad that I get to stay here. Mm. And um, Hope's happy too. And then Evelyn and Roy go back to the cafe later and she's and <laughs> she's going to be living there with Nina too, mm. which I forgot about. And she's like, you know, I'm going to have No, no, a... no. I didn't think that Nina was living there. I Where's thought she that... living then? I don't know, maybe... No, did Roy ask Nina to go? And... I don't know. We did. Th- see, this is the problem. And um, and somebody pointed this out on Twitter. I think it was, it was Chris. But I've been thinking the exact same thing. Where we really desperately need some scenes inside Roy's flat. Too many scenes at the moment that would fit better in there are all happening in the cafe because clearly the ca- the Roy's flat has been packed up. I mean, it, it's probably one of the most tricky flats to put together, isn't it? One of the sorry, one of the most tricky sets to put together because it's so jam packed full of stuff. But I, it, it's feeling weird to me to have a story about Evelyn moving in with Roy without seeing any of their living arrangements. It's all about hearing them, don't you think? Yes, that is what's going on. They're just saying don't, you can show us. You don't need Roy's, to tell us. Roy's flat is a really iconic location. I I don't know when the last time we saw it was. Um, uh, there's so much that so much comedy that could come out of seeing them actually sharing a flat rather Maybe than we'll just see hearing it about week. it. Yeah, go on. I I, I, I just feels like they would have. If they were going to unpack Roy's flat set, we would have seen it right from the start. But I I can't remember where Nina's living. But Evelyn's in her room, isn't she, with the cure poster? Right. She says to Roy, she's going to be using the lock on the door, and she doesn't want him sleep walking in his in her room. And um, and Roy gives her a dig to say that Tyrone's a good man, doing his best for his for his mum. Can I give a shout out to the two different ways you've spelt Wednesday completely wrong? No, you Your? can't. Wednesday, Wednesday. Wet sneedy. You always point out my spelling mistakes. <laughs> it did, well, I'm it's, typing um, very fast. It's just for a joke. <laughs> I can't spell normally. Tyrone realises his car's been stolen. Not his car, Michael. A car's been stolen from the garage. Oh, was it? That's it. I'm glad you... And now, I wonder whether this... This made me think that either Cassie was behind this car being stolen to get money, mm. or she's going to think, hey, if a car gets stolen from the garage... Nothing bad happens because it's insured. So I can just take tell people where the keys are and I can get a cut out of the money. Mm. But anyway, Ty- yeah, Tyrone realises this car's been stolen. So he asks Cassie to look after the kids before school. So she's really proud to accompany them to the bus stop and wish them a good day at school. I don't, I don't think they need accompanying to the bus stop. It's like, what, a 10 second walk? I think well, they're old enough to make their own way yeah. there by now. Evelyn has had a rude awakening, not literally, but it's the shipping forecast. Roy's been playing it at half past five in the morning, and she's also freaked out by Nina's The Cure poster. And what did she say? She cure. said, if that's the cure, I would rather have the disease. Or yeah. that? No, I think I wrote it down. If that's a cure, I'd rather have the disease. Evelyn had some brilliant lines this week. She, she called had the, Nina yeah, the, the, Count Spatula. Count Spatula. It's like, it's so <laughs> obvious. Why has nobody thought of that before? It was a brilliant line. And then she also had a line where she's like, um, she's somebody's asking her how, it, how things are with Roy. And she's like, oh, I can't complain. I never do. Yes, you do. She's, been, she's had some really great one-liners this week. And that's why I think that I... I, I know Corrie doesn't always like to do this because they prefer the, the drama, but I just love to see some gentle, comedic scenes of the two of them living well, together. Well, when we read... when I'm going to read this out, OK? It sounds like a load of crap, but it was really interesting. So Evelyn's moaning because she wants Ty, um, Roy to go to get us some sardines from the cash and carry because it's cheaper. Tyrone calls her a scrounger. And then she buys the wrong potatoes and um, Roy tells her that Maris Piper's are the far superior potato. Which you agree with. This is absolutely true. In this country, Maris Piper, I know that they don't have... I don't think you have them in America and Canada. I think the Yukon Gold is a, <laughs> is also a very, very good potato. I can't remember what it was that Roy said, but his way of kind of subtly well, hinting about... to Roy, uh, to, yeah. to Evelyn, sorry, that these aren't actually the best potatoes. Because he's so... 
bloody right. polite is Roy, isn't he? Well, and he kind of skirts the issue. This this is the sort of stuff that used to happen in, you know, in the 60s, where it'd be like the whole episode revolved around Elsie Tanner getting the wrong sort of knitting needle. You're right, that would take like up that. a whole half an hour back in the day. <laughs> And you still be like, oh my God, I can't believe what she's going to do. <laughs> so um, anyway, that was just a nice bit of character building, wasn't it? And the yeah. tension's already building between these two and they've only just been moving in with each other. Tyrone finds Evelyn in the pub later and she's denying falling out with Roy. And he's asking her whether she's got um, lingering feelings for him and she glares at him and he sort of runs away. Yeah, if I, I tell you what, if I was Evelyn, I'd be making my move right now. Yasmin's in Pakistan. Yeah, she was the Gooseberry before. Exactly. Get, get in there, girl. Get in there. So, but, well, I mean, the compromise she has with Roy's earplugs. Oh, so that she's not, yeah. So she, why don't you get him to forecast. listen to the Shivin forecast with ear, earbuds in? I can't in. remember, they might if have he, If he that. had just been hanging around Paul earlier, he could have just nicked those and had them for free. Yeah, very true. I can't believe that Shelley's dead. We can't get to order any off the catalogue. <laughs> um, th- so this, yeah, the, the Roy and Evelyn situation... Um, there wasn't very much Ty and Cassie this week, was it? I, I have very much enjoyed that aspect of I'm it not before, but this was more about the Roy and Evelyn. Feeling good things about Roy and Evelyn as a couple. I don't just do not see it at all. I don't like it. I can't decide. I don't want it. I know I know you're not alone there. Lots of people are saying no way, steer clear, but But then, you know, I was I was perfectly happy for Cathy and Roy when that was on the table. Yeah. I, so I'm not completely I just adverse really, to... you know, We really love Evelyn and she clearly, she's she's hiding very well that she's got the hots for Roy. I just don't see them bit. at all. She, I, it's not even like they're so, oh, they're so opposites attract, they're so I don't, different. I, I do, yeah, I don't think they'd make a good couple. That's no. That's the problem. They wouldn't make a good couple. I don't think it'd be funny. I think... She she is very, you know, she's sweet on him. And he's kind of fairly oblivious to all, isn't he? I okay. think she thinks that they could be happy together, but they, they're not a good match in the slightest. No. It's oh, tragic, so. tragic. Any, there's, 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 I guess there's not much to say about this storyline, um, so we shall move on there. Um, what, what's all this? I've actually got the wrong storyline title. What's all this? Jo- Joel, Joel Love Denial, Gemma. Joel Love Denial is next. Right. Still not getting a so. still not getting a right. What does it mean yeah. again? Joel Love Denial. Oh Joel, yeah, I forgot his Joel. name. Joel. Joel. We said last week that he's still and he's um gonna stand by it a little bit. He just does seem quite anonymous to me. He really, really is. This whole this story spanned the whole week of and, and what actually happened in it, this could be summarising. Dee Dee has a date with Joel by the end of the week. Yeah, and it feels like to me. Dee Dee's gone down a storm with everybody, hasn't she? She won Best Newcomer. Um, she is very, very popular character. She's she's only, she's only been in it a year. And I kind of feel a bit like a... Um, what's the word? A possessive dad. Like, what makes you think, Joel, that you've got any right to date our Dee Dee? I'm not... You're nowhere near... I thought you said RD. <laughs> any right to date our Dee Dee? Just leave our Dee alone. Um... I'm just not necessarily feeling any chemistry between the two of them yet. Not really. No, there's no spark. I mean, they, they get no. on nicely in the scene. But what does she like about him? We, we don't, don't really know. know anything about Joel other than he's also a lawyer. Wow. He could be anybody at this stage. And yeah. I'd rather there was something about him that made her heart flutter. Or yeah, what's so special about Joel? just kind of piques her interest. It needs to be somebody quite spectacular because, as we all know, Dee Dee is... An award-winning, amazing lawyer. Yes. I just... He, he comes across as being very temporary. And when there's characters like that, then it's hard to be invested. But it's also I think... What, I can't see, you know, yeah. six months down the line. He's not going to be here, so, so therefore he's got something wrong with him. And therefore my question is, what is what is it? Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's setting up for, well, she's been in the show a year, now we're going to put her in a, a long-term relationship. I don't know what could go wrong. Maybe, you know, she's going to be too interested to not be able to uh, separate, put her, her, separate business. her business yeah. and, play, and, and yeah, work and, and love life or, or whatever. But I, so but the fact that I know that 
it's going to be hard to invest in their romance makes me think, well, we need a decent plot here. And so far, that hasn't happened yet. Whoa. He, there doesn't even seem to be any hints that he's got a dark secret or That's anything. What I mean. Come on, Joel. What's so he going to do? 101. Is he secretly not a lawyer? <laughs> well, he know. is because he was at the... He was at the police station, wasn't he? Police station. Maybe he was a criminal. Maybe. Maybe this is a case of the Jude, um, Jude Appletons. Yeah. <laughs> I am not, nor have I ever been a criminal lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so what, what's happened this week? He, Joel is trying to... Seduce her. Seduce Dee Dee, but she's... Um, Oblivious. That, yeah, you can say all my adjectives if you like. Um, she's she's wants to she he's saying look I'm going over to America at some point to do a bit of lawyering maybe I mean this is the other thing we're being literally told he's not going to be in the country soon no I think he was saying that to to get in with her well see I kind of missed well, it because th- everything I... that happened in this story <sighs> oh, this God. week as much as I like do like Dee Dee I wasn't necessarily Literally. paying attention to well, what was happening but yeah they're having a day work I love Dee Dee's self confidence because he says listen Dee Dee can you talk me through what the difference is between American and British law. And she's like, yeah, I'll do it in an hour. I know. I've got an hour free. I'll just let you know. That... And it's like, also, she didn't say, what what part of America are you going to? Because I think they're all different, aren't they? <laughs> all the states are different. I think that's the whole point of it, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we've got Adam there smirking away because he's being a bit of a cupid this, this week. Him saying, I'm going to America to do some lawyering. Is this how we feel when Americans say, I'm going to go to Europe for the week? Yeah. Like, yeah, what specific... Well, you can't have got to be more specific. Um, anyway, so they, <laughs> they go to the pub. Dee Dee is completely oblivious to the fact that he's got the hots for her and actually does spend the whole hour talking to him about the uh, ins and outs of American law. She's like, and in she... America, unlike here, they have gavels. Did you know that? Yeah. Um, and then she goes back to the office they and Adam says, wigs. I can't believe you haven't noticed he was desperately trying to track you, uh, chat you up. He, she says, just like we have school uniforms... And we also have uniforms for lawyers, but they don't do that in America. They just wear what they like. They can wear their own outfits. Can you believe I can it? see I was right. I'm just kind of sipping ahead to Wednesday when Joel and Dee Dee meet up and Dee Dee says to him straight, look, you, you're not really even interested in US law, are you? You're just using it as an excuse to come on to me. And he's like, well, he's a bit embarrassed at first. He says, no, I, I am. I am interested. No, oh, no, says, oh, no I you are right. just coming on. Yeah, I know. I am always right. No, I thought that he was saying... I am interested in US law, but also I was trying to... It doesn't matter. I don't care doesn't what Joel's matter. future plans are for his career, Yeah. funnily enough. But there's some kind of drama that Dee Dee's supposed to be hanging out with Adam and every time, every date that Joel suggests that they meet up together, she's already got, got, work. got, got something up in her diary. So, oh no, is she going to meet up with Joel? Yes, she does. They have a lovely date on Friday's episode. Well, Adam ends up Adam, tricking her, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, Adam's yeah. bit playing Cupid. Yeah, and um, they have a lovely time. He's mega impressed to hear that she's James Bailey's sister, and um, then then they go back, to, and he has, he gives her a kiss and then goes home. I can't believe he didn't say any. He put his foot in it about James Bailey. What what should he have said? Are you James Bailey's sister, the one that nearly died? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't you have brought that up if you were him? Like, oh my god, were you there when he died? <laughs> um. So. She Maybe. also didn't. She also didn't use that opportunity to boast about the t- fact that she negotiated his contract. Very true. So that was one of my first scenes. Actually, I negotiated his contract. I'm not even. I don't even do sports. <laughs> um, may- maybe you know this gentle introduction to the romance is good because sometimes I complain when a character is just desperate to get into the pants of the other one straight away, and we don't get to see much of the courtship stage. They. People mm. just get have a drunken snog and there we go, they're going out. And here we maybe it's going to be a bit sweeter, but I don't, they just need to put something in there to make me a bit more interested in this. I don't know. I don't know if this has happened and, and I haven't seen it, but I don't know that Ian McLeod's done a character profile where he's like, Joel's going to make a splash when he first in, comes on the street and he's going to be after all the ladies. Watch out, everybody. Joel's a woman. A womanizer. And <laughs> Joel's, he knows, a woman. <laughs> Joel's a woman. Joel's that a womanizer. That's a dark secret. I was going to say woman eater, but that's not right, is it? No. You can have a man eater, but you can't have a woman eater because I think that's illegal. Yeah, you also can't have a manizer. Manizer. Man- mm. Manizer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. He's not a character, is he? He's a boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so um, we were talking this week about... 
they seem to have got rid of Dee Dee's klutzy side, haven't they? Yeah. That was the thing. Does anyone else notice that? When Dee Dee came in, the, the way the publicity described her was like, you know, she's a hotshot lawyer Dee Dee in the courtroom, but then she, she's, she's... an idiot. Got, she's, she's got toilet paper trailing off uh, out of the back of her skirt. And there were lots <laughs> of scenes at the beginning where she would lose things or... Well, they, yeah, she'll say, oh, I've got, not got my papers in Yeah, she right misplaced order. something and she seemed like completely unorganised. But get her in the courtroom, and she, you know, she'd slay them. But they don't, they don't seem to have that anymore. She just seems to be a a bright, bubbly, vibrant, just a normal, confident, um, funny business, not businesswoman, a lawyer woman, l- 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 lawyer woman. Um, well, they did have a bit where she was like, "Where's my keys?" Only oh, they're in brief- my pocket. Yeah, very briefly. But I think I prefer that. I felt a bit forced before, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. There's only so many times that somebody can say, oh, there we go again. I mean, look what we're seeing with Kirk. Which which story was Kirk in? Uh, He was in... um... He, he was, was in the... the he was in the Ed... No, he was not. He was in the Ed storyline today, going around... Well, he was, he was jumping into different people's stories, saying, oh, is that dolphin friendly? And, and this is what happens when you just try and make somebody painfully funny and repeat the same things again. We we don't want I didn't want Dee Dee to go down that route and go oh I lost my lost my lipstick again and oh. anyway what I'm trying to say is I think that current iteration of Dee Dee is best iteration of Dee Dee I'm really really pleased with the way her character is going long may that continue um I think who's doing the storyline I've forgotten where we're up to now do you want to do you want to talk about Sabrina for a bit on yes, Monday you do, I can tell we see the salon yeah. Max is there souping up because I think he's is he still atoning for Lauren's um, wrecking of the place last week. So Max, I like the way that Coronation Street's punishing Lauren for her crime of, you know, being uh, crapping up the the salon, but no, still no peep about her being a white supremacist. You you just can't let that go, can you? Can't you can't tell me that she she you can't have a character who's hanging around with white supremacists. And not have her say at any point, by the way, I didn't actually think that myself. Mm. And, and expect me to believe it, to, you know, to think that she's any different. Anyway, so he's sweeping away and Max is talking to um, David about being worried about Lauren. And, and he says, look, she's she got Roy to look after her now. Lauren and Roy, meanwhile, are trying to work out where she can stay. We've already, already spoiled the end of this. We haven't got any ideas. Oh, where could it be? Roy says to Nina, would you mind if Lauren came to stay with us? And she says, look, I'm, I'm worried about about you because we already know she tried to come on to you and she's vulnerable and unstable. And then Roy says, Lauren should move in with Evelyn. Um, no, Lauren Ron, didn't. Lauren go to the flat. Evelyn move in with me. So there's a bit of Still don't know where Nina's, N- Nina's going to be. Roy stops to the salon to let Max know Lauren's in the, in the precinct, but Sabrina's not very happy because it turns out they live next door to each other. Yeah, they had the scene towards the end of Monday's episode which seemed to be setting up all neighbours at war with Sabrina and Max and Lauren, but then they completely don't go anywhere with it, which is a bit of a I'm bit of a still quite surprised at the exterior of those two precinct flats because they obviously knew what they were going to do with them when they were set dressing the exterior oh, what, with the gnomes and stuff why has sabrina got a bunch of weird gnomes and and plastic flowers <laughs> and and the flat that cassie's inherited used to have all the dog stuff outside of it but i don't think they've moved it i don't know who knows nobody um so yeah more, more to come on this story later on um Who's Mrs. Periwinkle? Mrs. Oh, I just wrote down Mrs. Periwinkle because that was the person. She got a line, didn't she? She was the person oh, in the, in the salon the whose um, hair salon. danger was cut. We were only just saying, what, what are they not going to ever cut anyone's hair ever again? Mm. But I told you that it, it, oh. I don't. It winds me up when um, these these minor, you know, one-off characters get given silly names. Sorry to any Periwinkles out there. Yeah, but everybody. It in seems the like everybody who books, goes salon books. Yeah, everyone in the salon books has got like a little eccentric names. twee name. Yeah. Can't think of any right off the top of my head, but it really annoys me. Um, and then finally, we've got the um, Ed Edna Gigi storyline. Um, basically, Gigi. yes, basically, Ed's gambling. He's gambling on the horses, and he's not. And he's telling Ronnie, "No, I'm not." And Kirk saw him. Kirk saw him on the bookie on the street with all the bookies. But Ed says, "No, honestly, I'm fine. I don't. That I don't need me. any money. I'm not struggling financially." And Ronnie says, 
Well, that's okay then. And we we hear that um, Debbie is a is a bit of a a fiend for stealing other people's food when you when you go to a restaurant. I don't believe it. Where she put it all? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe well, maybe she's like um, Sabrina because she's very slight, but apparently also a that's true. She's a competitive eater. eater. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Anyway, so that was that with this week's Coronation Street. I, I quite enjoyed chatting about that with you today. It started off very, very, um, you know, Sorry. uninspiring with the Stu storyline. But, you know, if Corey's going to make it the A storyline of the week, we'll, we'll give it its dues. I just give it its stews. <laughs> but uh, how can that got a big <laughs> laugh than anything else that I painstakingly worked hard to do? Um, yeah, so I, I, it, it didn't didn't work for me. But the um, the 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 Wednesday of the RD and Dev and Courtney storyline was brilliant. I I just love a good tense dinner party scene in fiction. Yeah, good. They have, yeah. They, um, where have we seen? I can't think of any shows that we've seen them. But when mean? they get. Um, when characters are sitting and having dinner the together, the IT crowd is like the, the IT, dinner party scene. The IT crowd is, dinner party is episode the is the best, but there are other ones. It's uh, is it like was there one in Doctor Foster maybe? Oh yeah, that was great. Having characters sitting around a dinner party where some of them know something, but yeah, they can't I love say, it. I love and they it. Kind of, I, I love classic. I love that. So well, it was also... really really well done on Corey. Yeah. yeah. Well, it also no. what? Um, so so that was quite good. Um, the Paul storyline, I, I I think that's one that in my head when it comes on, I kind of think, oh no, not the Paul storyline again. And then I constantly find myself think, then thinking, oh no, this is actually really, really good. So that was super. Paul's storyline is the most I've ever enjoyed a medical based storyline. Yeah. Of Coronation At last ever. they've got it right, Gemma. They've got they it. They've to got crack it. jokes about it and I'm in. <laughs> Um, but there, there were storylines. You know, the Joel storyline was very filler, despite filling three episodes or you know featuring in three episodes. Sabrina, not much happened. Ed's story was a warm up. So um, yeah, a real, real mixed bag this week, with some big highs. Yes. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna let you score yeah, it first. I'll give if it, that's um, okay. Three brains in Ardy's boxer shorts. <laughs> three brains in his boxer shorts. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm thinking three as well. Um, I am going to give. I'm gonna give it three angry badges out of five, which was David's name for Kevin's haircut. Oh, that didn't work. That scene didn't land for me, unfortunately. Um, what was it, David saying about? David the... saying he's he's separated everybody's hair into twelve distinct. Um, styles based on animals. Yeah, and Kevin's the angry badger, which I think does absolutely fit him. But also, he, is he said, angry Kev, isn't but it? he said that um, that Ken was the Lion King, which is not a, an animal; it's a movie. Yeah, did I he mean Simba? Because I, I I can see that. It's one of those things that I like the concept, but I it think didn't work in the, execution. It, at it all. needed a little bit more work. And what was it? What was um? Oh, was Max was supposed to be bit. Funky Gibbon. Yeah. But it, in Why? what way does his hair look like I a Funky know. Gibbons? No idea. Um, it didn't work. It should have been celebrities because I don't think animals really have haircuts, do they? Not really. No. Not really. Um, who's your character, the week? Oh, that's a good Gemma question. Minor. I had thought I thought of what, of what my score was, and I was smug about it. Yeah, I, and now it, I it was looking like it was going to be a two and a half, but so, so it just kind of tipped into the three for me this um, week. Um, was Shelley in it this week? Vaguely. I'm gonna give it to Shelley. Have I given it to her before? I don't know, but she's great. I love her so much. Um, yeah, Shelley, it's got to be Shelley. I'm R.I.P. I'm loath to give it to Evelyn again because it feels like we're doing it all the time. But honestly, she's had some of the best lines this week. But um, she also wasn't a major player, so I don't feel so guilty if I don't give it to her. Uh, Dev was fantastic on Wednesday. Um, mm. Oh. Dee Dee was good. Paul was excellent i think i think i'm gonna go paul i think as being the main character as thinking of the the growth that his character went through this week the acceptance of help the the um joining joining along and kind of having a good laugh with with uh with shelly um the fantastic acting from um from peter all combines to make paul my character of the week i'm very pleased to give it to him so that is it (laughs) 